And uh, can I get you something to drink? I got some water. Be great. Room temporary cold. Cold. Ooh. Um. There we go. Wash my hands. Thank you. You're gonna take be a mustache. Couch. No, leave the mustaches. Leave it. Those are. All right. Here. You're on the couch. Yep. And uh, everyone from taking shoes off knows what do we like to do? We like to keep it on the brown. So just stay on the blanket. Keep it on the brown. Oh, is that because you think I'm a dirty person? Uh, I don't like outdoor clothes um, outside. I feel that. So when you go to the airport and you come home, I, I, I throw them away, burn them? No, I walk immediately. I bring my suitcase in. Yeah. I walk to my washing machine. I get naked. Throw yeah. my clothes in the washing machine. I masturbate. Ah. Just kidding. That's a clean load. That's a clean load. The music. <laughs> Scoop doo. Blabbity blue. Scoop D. Oh yeah. Can you afford it? So what do you just record and then run back and check? Uh, I put the I put um You focus on the trophies. No, I, feel I like, try not to pay much attention to that. Is this a flex on me because I don't have any trophies? You have to have trophies. I have a few. I know one Mentally. trophy that you have. What's that trophy? I know two trophies that you have. Give me them. Um, how's this for eyeline? Great. Can we just, before we do anything, can we just do have a practice conversation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how's stand-up been going? Uh, you know, man, I really love it. You know, right. I, I think stand-up comedy is, is the most pure art form. So good. The most what? Pure. Pure art, pure art form. form. Yeah, yeah. Y yeah, you know. Hey. Do you find, do you find like, it's like you really, like, it's just up you up there? One more time? Yeah, it's just like, it's just you up there. It's not like a movie where there's music and there's that. It's just you up there. Like, just there's really me. nowhere to hide, right? Kind of, we need to up it. We need to up it a little bit. Like, let's bring, I want, like, somebody to, like, walk through the background of my set every once in a while. You don't ever have people walking through the background of your set? No. Not yet. Save Interns. It. Save it. Okay. Okay. So I'll be right around here. Okay. You're here. That's your eye line. And that's my focus point. Okay. That, okay. Um, what happens if I start? Fo who's the lady above that? Oh, that is. Is that the Kristen oh, Bell? Is, yeah, that is Kristen Bell. Autograph, dude. Wow. Yeah, I got it. Would you mind if I signed it too? I would. Didn't mind at all. <laughs> at the end. Um, Perfect. Yeah, I got it on eBay. Uh, and, uh, and it was signed. Dear Rick, you have the best buns yeah. in the business? Whoa, but, what does that mean? It's, you wouldn't get it. It's something that only really Industry talk. actors get. Yeah. yeah, I've never booked anything. Really? Never. Have you, you auditioned? so many self-tapes. Manifesting. Yeah. Today on Take Your Shoes Off. I will book the biggest role of my life next year. Wait a minute. Do you audition for things? I'd self-tape, yeah. And you've never booked anything? Never. I did one voiceover. Do you that want was because do you, I have headphones. Um, if you, you don't like them? Are you doing headphones? I am, but no obligations. I won't do it. Okay. You know. The only thing I need to hear is my own voice. Right. And I'd like for you to hear it so you know to do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'll put them off. It's plugged in? Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, these are big boys. These are like, you could fly a Southwest jet with these. Theme music. <laughs> Scoop. Every time you have a good pun punchline. Oh, hell yeah. Music. Yeah, there we go. I guess that was in a pun. Sounding crispy. Yeah, and these are the type of headphones that you could wear for hours and they don't hurt your ears. They don't. Some of them do. Most of them do. The ones that where you go to the doctor for the audio test, those are the most dense headphones in the world. How often? I don't remember the last time I went to an audio test. Maybe like nine years ago, but... Say that again? Nine years ago. One more time? Nine years ago. I heard that. You don't need to go. Theme music. But, <laughs> but the, the ones that were like the faint, like beep. Right. Beep. Then you click a button. I would just be doing it just to fucking give myself something to do. You know, growing up, I wanted to be colorblind. I did. <laughs> you have that look. Yeah, I wanted something about me that was different. This kid, Garrett, in my middle school had glasses on, and I was like, Garrett for sure gets women because he has glasses on. Oh, interesting. I had glasses and I didn't get women. I, well, but my name wasn't Garrett. I'm sure if my name Garrett was Garrett. Glassman, <laughs> Garrett Glassman is either a leading actor in a CW or goes on to later do adult pornography. Swim? Oh. You Garrett could be swimming in there. I meant adult swim. Ah. Oh, I've just been sleeping like dog shit recently. Why? Eh, it's my girlfriend and also... The mattress I sleep on feels like a piece of concrete. I got some great news to tell you. I'll tell you more in a little bit. But first, let me let the audience know that this episode is sponsored by Helix Mattress. That's helixsleep.com slash Tyso to save up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows. Well, that's convenient. Because with Helix, better, better sleep, sleep starts, starts now. now. 
What's up? My name's Rick Glassman, and you're on the set of Rick Gla Oh, turn off the picture in picture for a second. Oh. What's up? I'm Rick Glassman, and you're what and we're in the Rick Glassman Nitro, Nitro, Nitro studios, where I'm doing my exclusive solo podcast, which is I'm calling Rick Glassman Nitro. I don't know if it's gonna stick. But, you know, nitro is like what you add. You want a coffee? Not really. You want a nitro coffee? Give me three. So I feel like nitro has that zing right now. But, yeah, we, we talk about wild stuff. We talked about, remember, we talked about um, dating a transgendered girl. We talked about uh, Jimi Hendrix. We talked about Sarah Bareilles. Uh, so if you want to see and hear about some of those things, head on over to patreon.com slash take your shoes off and sign up. Oh, and one more thing. It's magic. All right. What's up, Florida? My name's Rick Glassman. And I'm Tony Caruso. And I'm coming to Florida, St. Petersburg, which is near Tampa, October 21st and... It's the next day. October 22nd. That's right. And you can go to Coastal Creative to find out. I'll put the link in the description. But I want to tell you real quick and my audience who I'm going with and what we're doing. I'm very excited if about could, this. If you could say hi to Charlene at the, at the Hooters in Tampa. Yeah, we'll do. So Eric Griffin... Do you know Eric Griffin? Oh, uh, from um, uh, uh, we're Workaholics, I'm dying up here. Have you met Eric? No, but I'm a big fan of the, um, he just always, he reminds me of like Chester Cheeto, right? right. So Eric Griffin and I are going to be in Tampa, which Love. is, who am I saying hi to again? Uh, Charlene at the Hooters in Tampa. You know who you are. And what do I say? Just hi, he, that Tony? Don't have to say anything. It's, it's, it's a look, ready? You look at her and you'll go, oh, hello. But how will she know it's from you if I'm saying that? She'll know. Okay. So Eric Griffin and I are doing two shows mm -hmm. each night. We're going to do a live podcast, and then we're going to do a live stand-up show. Two separate shows, four shows in total. I wish I could go. That's one of your uh, catchphrases, right? One from my earliest movies. All right. And look uh, for Tony Caruso's episode. We'll be coming uh, later this month, I think. I think it'll be around Halloween. It's, 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 it's a pretty spooky episode. Yeah, I got bag snatched. No, we're, we're going to... Which reminds me before, because I do want to get back to, I want to know more about the colorblind stuff yep, yep, yep. and about the auditioning. And I don't want yep, to go yep, yep. all over the place, but I did make myself. And I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah. You got to go get your hot pockets. Yeah. I think sometimes Rick just goes off. I think right now he's uh, deciding if he wants to use a spork for lunch or not. But uh, oh, what is this? Oh, this is. I made myself a, a, a latte. Oh, a latte. Yeah. Ask me if I love them. You do you do you love a latte? Um, theme music. Uh, I don't love them. I would say I do like them. Well, split the difference. I like them a latte. Theme music. Theme music. Put it in there. Put it in there. Do you got a little machine or just somebody back there working? No, it's just uh, we we just put it in post. The latte. The uh, theme music. Oh no! The th where did you get the latte from? That's oh yeah, funny. Thank you. Um. People don't. Re people actually see a latte in here. This is just a green cup. It really is. And then we CGI whatever I say. It's I athletic put in there. greens. Use yeah. my promo code socks. <laughs> is that it's do you? It's Tyso. Tyso. Yeah. But hold on, I want to go back to the auditioning. Yes. Um, because for the people that are, you know, people that are going to be watching, some are like, "Holy shit, he got Trevor Wallace, the dude who used to want to be colorblind, who didn't fuck like Garrett on the podcast." And yep. then some people are like, "I'm not too familiar with this guy." Yeah. For the people that aren't too familiar. Instead of, why don't you tell, tell me, in, in 30 seconds, give yourself the most hype. If, if, if you're the host mm -hmm. and Trevor Wallace is about to go up next, yep. and you said to the host, listen, you could be funny and silly, sure, but I want you to say like real things, yeah. like real things that are like yeah. cool that I've accomplished, and do it fucking hype. Okay. Um, I'm finishing a set beforehand, or this is between acts. Oh, no, yeah. You, for, you, you, know, you just, I do, just you finished. Just, no, do the punchline. We don't have to, just yeah. do the punchline mm -hmm. of the closer. Yeah, and then you do your thing. Like a lot of times at the end, like all right, all right thank you, thank you. All right, calm down, calm yeah. down, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. Let yeah, me introduce right. this next guy. Yeah, do yeah, that. I know. I'll be, I'll be up here. All right, okay, yeah. ready? And and that's why they call it kombucha. All right, <laughs> thank you guys so much. Um, I'm gonna be your host tonight, but this next comedian, man, he had to go up early because he had other things to do after this. Because he's very important, man. I'm so excited to work with this guy. It's been an honor. It's been a dream to bring him up, but. Uh, man, this guy is everywhere on the internet. You can't open an app without seeing him. He's the what do you mean? Age. Just like on one of those, like one of TikTok. those apps? Just TikTok. Sir, no heckling. No heckling. TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, 
Uh, Twitter, not anymore. I deleted it. It's too sad. Uh, Facebook, sometimes even. Dude, he's literally everywhere. He's what does he have? It. Like a hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube? I mean, this guy's got three point one million subscribers on YouTube. Eight point five on eight point five million on TikTok. Two point six. It's, it's too on big now. Now it's Instagram. too big. It's too long. I mean, now this it's too guy. Long. Now you're doing too. Do it again. Okay. Or tighter. And that's why they call it kombucha, you know? All right, thank you so much, man. I have been your host. It's an absolute honor to be with your next community. You guys ready for your next community? Make some noise right now. Dude, this guy is everywhere on the internet. He's got 8.5 million followers on TikTok. He's the new age. He's, he's the next big thing, and you're about to see it tonight. Make some noise for my friend and yours, Trevor Wallace, who also has an average cop. Thank you. Wow, what an intro over that. It's more than average, but thank you, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you <laughs> just, know, do, just do, <laughs> just do, do my acts. Isn't that such a funny idea for a special to treat it like that? Like the special in podcast form, like the special would oh. be to the host. Isn't there somebody who did a special where they did it with no audience? Uh, well, Norm McDonald did one just on Zoom, like to nobody. That's great. Harlan Williams, I think, did one out in the desert without anybody. That checks. Out. I love Harlan. He's you need to. Yeah. I, Let's I cut to know. a clip. I just did his pod. I could get Doctor Whom on the phone, and he will let you know. Who? Get, whom? I'm sorry. Who? <laughs> no, no. His name is Doctor Whom. My doctor is named Seymour Whom. How do you spell that? W H O M. Oh, with the silent M. Okay. No. Who? Hmm. Whom? Are you saying hmm or hmm? Doctor Whom? Knock what? knock. Whom's there? Who? Your doctor. Doctor Whom. Okay. Okay. And we're back. So you're you're a big um, uh, internet personality, and that has um that is very. Like having an online audience directly translates to ticket sales. And I've, I've seen you doing some stuff on the road where you're playing huge mm -hmm. venues, but you also want to be acting. Yeah. I just wanted to kind of do it all really. Um, just, I think I want to do it to see if I like that side of the, the traditional things, but also to see, it's nice to know that I think the, the internet person, the internet kind of, uh, connotation is really bad and like most ho traditional Hollywood people are like why would we cast some Instagram idiot like I just want to kind of like do some stuff and be like oh this guy can act oh this guy's good this guy's easy to work with this and that so I want to just kind of put myself out there and I know it's like let me get a small role let me walk in and, and say Postmates for Brian and then leave that's my role but I'll make it funny I don't know how but I will let me hear it coming one sec I think my Postmates is here um We'll finish this. I'm sorry to hear about your sister, and that sounds, that must be very tough. Let me just get this. I just don't want to make him wait outside, and we'll come right back, and we'll try and figure this out. All right, I love you, baby. I love you. I'll be right back. Hello? Wow. It smells like depression and horniness in here. Postmates for Brian? Okay. Here you go. Booked. Booked it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was on the spot, but I don't know. I, I think just... Um, I'm sorry, Keith. Man. Yeah, I just want to, uh, there's some big comedians who have done real small roles, but they knock it out of the park. And I just want one of those roles where you pop in, you do a quick little, uh, 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 quick little cameo, you're in, you're out. I don't even want to be in the IMDb. I want people, I just want to be in people's brains where they're like, yo, was that Trevor in that episode of Succession? There is so much going on right now. All I can see is my reflection and trophies. I wish I had trophies growing up. I had a second place uh, a soccer trophy which I thought was pretty cool that my parents hung up. They didn't need to do that. I like to acknowledge that I understand how distracting that was. Um, at first, I really was just making sure that I focused that camera. Yeah. But then I was just doing a classic looking in the camera to see if they're going back. Sometimes you got to just look. Yeah. And you get a nice reflection of yourself. Um, but the, what you talking about wanting to have one of those small roles where you get to really like hit it. Yeah. There's, it, m there's many things, but there's two main factors of that. There's one, the role that exists. There's only so many roles that exist that are like written... Like guest star role. I talk about this with my buddy DeWalt a lot. John DeWalt put up his thumbnails here. Um, you s a lot of times shows don't give guest stars big chances because they just they just don't. I they don't, don't want to think about the role. Let's just cast it real quick. Maybe, but also like I think that's a big miss. I think like there's a lot of times like really funny little roles come in, and but the problem is established people oftentimes may not want to do come in to do three lines right 
So then you have to find a relatively unknown or somebody at least that they don't know who's able to come in and smash them. And it's not easy. There's a, the, um, do you watch The Office? Yeah, parts of it. Uh, I'm going to do a, a real niche reference, but there's an episode in The Office. I think it's season two, episode one. I think it's the first Dundee's episode. It's one of the Dundee's ones where Pam gets drunk and uh, ends up being a little obnoxious. And the, the, I think it was at Chili's or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. The manager of the restaurant was like, oh, she's not welcome back anymore. Like it was like, it was like a little line. And they were like, he fucking slayed that. Yeah. And you, those stand out. That's when I first found Jonah Hill in 40 year old virgin when he had that, uh, when he was the fish the, at the bottom of the shoes at the eBay store. Do you not remember that movie? I do. I still remember that role. Jonah it was a Hill very had small role. He had some great roles like that. Great. Like even the, the waiter on forgetting Sarah Marshall, I think. Oh, that had, was bigger though. That, that was like was, a real role. That was a real role. But even that he, you know, maybe He's had amazing. like seven lines and then just pop, 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 pop. Yeah. Um, just like stuff like that. I know Seth Rogen was like the camera guy in Anchorman, which uh, you start to connect the dots and be like, you, you don't want to open your door and you're like, you book your biggest role. It's like you want to kind of slowly piece it apart. That way you got this whole catalog and you're, you, you know what to do on set when you're there and you, you're trusted. It's not like, because I think if I got a big role right out the gates right now, I'd be nervous as hell. And I probably wouldn't start to get comfortable until like the last episode or something. First one. Interesting, being, right. Just to, to kind of like, I think it's with anything. It's like, the first time I ever got paid in stand up was like three years in, but it's like I was so uh, thankful and appreciative of that moment. But if I just went to now to make in whatever the fuck I make, but why now, you do so much stuff? You feel it's different when you're on a set that isn't for the internet or something. Well, because it's in their words and not mine. If you want me to riff on set, I think I would do great. But if you want me to be like, these are the words somebody wrote, stick to them. Then I'm thinking you did the postmates as Brian. Well, oh, but you added. I I wrote that though. I wrote that line. So when somebody gives me a, like a monologue, I'm not thinking about the funny. I'm just trying to stick to the words. And, and it's like, uh, you know, but that's the whole thing about being an actor. You got to know a lot. Well, I'm going to. And gonna, that's a problem right there for me. I'm going to zoom out and say that's life, baby, because the issue with thinking about your lines isn't that you're thinking about your lines. It's that you're not present. With, not present. Correct. And, and hey, you know what? But the, that's probably why I don't. Oh, hold on. I want to say this. I want to say this. It's going to be really powerful. Sorry. You know what the ultimate line is? In, in real life, the lines to remember, this thing. Mm -hmm. It's hard to be present when we're paying attention to our lines. And that's actually what I wanted to get into today. Is this like a Boost Mobile ad? Mm. If you go to boostmobile.com <laughs> slash Tyso. No, but, but there is something to that where people feel like they need to have experience because, I mean, you do, but like one of the reasons is, oh, I'm just thinking about my lines. That's the case in anything. Yeah. I'm just thinking about my golf swing. I'm just thinking about what I'm supposed to say to the girl. Like when you're thinking you're about what you're it. supposed to be doing. Yeah, you're not in it. And it's pretty simple. Just learn your lines. Yeah, I mean, every time I send in a self-tape, I go, how quickly did I try to cram these lines to memorize? Oh, this morning? Checks out. I'm also competing with people who are like, you know, they put a whole week into it. They got acting coaches. This is their job right here. Acting is the thing I want to do. Stand-up and videos is what I love to do. So it's like I'm competing against somebody who's like, I am passionate about acting. I moved from North Dakota to book this role on New Girl. I'm going to get it. And I'm like, sure, I'll read for it. Let me memorize a paragraph in 42 minutes. Why don't you try harder? My time, my schedule. I, I, get, I mean, they send you a self-tape audition, and then like, we need this in four hours. And you're like, well, right. I, you send me this at 3 a.m. You need this at 7 a.m.? That's pretty quick. I mean, a lot of times, especially now with the Zoom ones, they're even a quicker turnaround. But usually it's we need this by tomorrow, end of day. Right. But I get that, and I'm either doing my podcast, uh, Stiff Socks, hey, plug it, clip. And I'm not going to lie. There's only one reason I'm doing this, and that's for cash. I'm only doing this for money. Um, I'm not doing this to connect with my audience. I'm not doing this to make art. I make my podcast for that, um, and this is just for money. Here. And we're back. But sorry, that was I'll get a clip from you. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I, I don't know if that was that. too controlling. I'm sorry. Oh, but please. That's but my middle the, name. There it is. Rick Controlling Glassman. Garrett Rick Controlling Glassman. ZRCG. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I don't know. I may, but maybe I just, need to, I just need to spend more time with it. That's really it. You said, you said that um, uh, when you're talking about having, the, you know, you have 3 million YouTube, uh, 8 million TikTok, blah, blah, blah. You're like, but it's just internet well, stuff. Well, blah, blah, blah is a little harsh. That's a little... Yada, yada. Excuse me. Thank you. <laughs> And it's like, it's just internet stuff. And you said, you basically said, you acknowledge that you feel that there's a stigma to online stuff that I would have agreed with you about a few years ago. Okay. Um, 
it's definitely separate. There's definitely the online, um, which online is, is not just about it being online. It's about it being self-produced usually. That's another big part of it. It's not just that it's online. Mm-hmm. It's that it's like if you look at some of these comedy specials of people putting it online, but they're producing it the way a comedy special would. It feels like a real special. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have such a big audience. Do you are you do you feel it, it's just online? Is there like do you put that on you like a stigma of it? Like you're not a real actor or comedian or you're an online. Do you think of yourself as an online comedian? No. Then what is the online that has a stigma that you're talking about? I think acting. I think acting in that world is two separate lanes and there are people that make good crossovers. King Batch did a good job. Jimmy Tatro did a good job. Those guys were all digital and then went to traditional. But I think those guys did a good job and I think it's just, um, it's easy to be like, oh, well, they only got booked for this because they have a following. Right. Like they're not going to look at the self tape and then be like, oh, wow, he actually did a really good job for this role. Like he definitely earned it. They're just going to be like, oh, they only booked him because he has a following. They're going to try to get views on it. Do you think beautiful women feel that way when they're asked out on a date that, oh, he only likes because I'm beautiful, even though she may have something more to offer? I would say when they're added to a lineup on a comedy show, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, cut to a clip of his podcast. You know, everybody's like, oh, I want to do coke off a girl's tits. I yeah. want to do dipping dots. Yep. Off some thoughts. Whole. <laughs> yeah. I mean, your producer told me to say that in this right ear. Right. But um, do I feel like, can you team me up for that question again? What do you guys think? Team me up, please. All right. Oh. Um, this idea that people only wanted this person in. King Batch or you or whatever these examples might be because they have a following. Um, that, If that's true, and I agree at, le- at least in part that's true, at least in big part that's true, that superficial, well, he has a... That's true to get you in the door. But if you're not good at it, you're not going to keep getting jobs. So that's fine. Right. Everybody will take their one round where they take a swing on a big internet person and they go, cool, we did a show with Have them. Have you had a swing? No. But I'm I'm in the batting cages. Oh yeah, I'm striking out. But I'm in the cages. Well, you know what it sounds like. It sounds like you're not preparing enough. I I agree, hundred percent. Well, I what agree. do we do? Spend two hours instead of forty two minutes. I mean, you're absolutely right. There's you're a hundred percent right. And I mean, that's really what it is. It's getting an acting coach. It's looking at the lines a little bit. Before. I got an acting coach. If you want, I would love one. Shout out to David Sullivan. Put his thumbnail. One, one of my best buds. You may have met him because he's come to shows a fair amount. Yeah. Um. Great actor, great acting coach. He coaches a lot of us, but he's uh, almost everything I've booked, he's coached me for. Really? Yeah. So, yeah, because the one time I got an acting coach, uh, it was for a role on Stranger Things, and the role was a stoner. And she's like, get in the role. And I was like, for sure. In the morning beforehand, the audition, I smoked weed, and I don't do that a lot. Did you do it for the audition to get in I, character? I did it for the audition to get in character, and I was just so much anxiety. I was like, this is terrible. Right. You can't do it if you're not there, right? Correct. Correct. Had I been at my home doing a self tape, a little bit off the weed would have been great. This was a stagnant office, and I got lost because it wasn't <laughs> like just for casting. It was at the Red Building and like uh, Red Cameras down in the middle of Hollywood. So you had to go in, talk to receptionist, get in an elevator, go up, go down a floor, and then you talk to the secretary there. And and I'm off the weed. It's not. I am nervous, and I'm wearing. It was like a summertime role. So I had short shorts on. I had a Hawaiian t-shirt unbuttoned to my belly button. I'm high. I mean- uh, Did you get high because you thought this would be better for you as a character or was it kind of a little bit of you're scared so you use it as an excuse? Character. I, 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 I think it would have, I thought it would read better to actually be a little stone than to fake being stone. Because I did take uh, acting classes in college and they were like, don't ever like pretend to be drunk, pretend to be high. Like it devalues like- Wait a minute, who, wait a minute. You're acting- Class told you that if you're playing somebody that's drunk, you're supposed to actually get drunk? No, they said don't. Well, yeah. They said don't. This is also San Jose State. I mean, this is not a that's big insane. acting school. I mean, my, my acting teacher probably also was an engineering major. But huh. I, but, they, but they said don't act how you think drunk would. Like, But then well, how are you supposed to act drunk? That's a great question. I will say this. Pe- uh, this it's, a, it's, it's a difficult thing. Like, drunk acting... I've said on my podcast before, I think the hardest thing to fake is laughing. If you're okay. if, it, like to do fake laugh, could you fake laugh? <laughs> yeah. It's the, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't know almost anything of how people feel. I could, I could pretty much tell if it's a disingenuous a laugh. Laughing is hard to fake. I also, I don't know if I could find the clip of, so let's swipe to it, but there's a clip of uh, Sandler saying uh, the same thing. 
that I saw. And I'm like, I feel that way. He's like, he, it's like, it's hard for me to fake laugh. Um, I also think watching people who are uh, fake drunk, you see some people and they're good at acting drunk. I feel like that's very hard to do. Very. Because it just seems cliche. You just slur words and you move your hands around like a wacky inflatable tube, man. You kind of just like, you guys want to go get nachos? You just sound like you're Is that what happens? I don't speed. drink, really. Do people do this? Kind of. But I think if I were to be a drunk guy right now, it's like your head would be crooked a little bit and you'd be like, I don't know, you don't, you wouldn't look like, most people who are drunk are still there, but one eye is just a little more powering down. Do you, you want to try it with a, with a hit of that bodega cat? A hit of it. Let's do the whole bottle. I mean, I am trying to get method acting. The smooth, rock old taste of Bodega Cat. The best cat you've ever had. Yeah, wait, let me try it again. Uh, was, that, was that not the right voice? You want more like a upbeat? Are you a drinker? No. Me neither. No, I wouldn't. I. Uh, but I that's a smooth whiskey. It looks like it. Bodega Cat. The smooth, sultry taste of the sweetest whiskey you've ever had. Bodega Cat whiskey. It's really, really nice. Is that okay? How was that? Oh. Yeah. Lovely. Sam came on uh, a few episodes ago and brought that, and I just feel it's fun to kind of keep there. And cats do love counters, so bodega cat on the counter. I've been saying it for weeks. They love counters. You didn't have one today. I, I, I saw you had a soda pop today. I had one yesterday. They love it. You mm -hmm. cat guy? Do you have one? I don't have one. Uh, I am a cat guy. I grew up with cats. Some of my yep. best friends are cats. And I want to get cats, except for I podcast here, and a lot of people are allergic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But that really separates the alpha males from, you know, it's like, hey, I want to do your pod, but I'm allergic to cats. Well, fucking sack up or get out. Yeah. Or I could actually try and only have those people on when I have my Benadryl sponsor ads. There you go. Yeah. Or they got to wear like a sleep apnea mask uh -huh. to go through the cat pain. Yeah, but I wash that blanket all the time. I could lock them upstairs. I'm, I'm, close you to, could. I'm close to doing it. I could see that, dude. I got a cat at home. He's great. <sighs> Little little orange cat, about a year and a half old. Where'd you get him? Chatsworth. Craigslist. Shout out to Chatsworth. Craigslist, by the way. Yeah, Craigslist. We went out there just to go feel it out, feel the vibe on him. And the lady came out. She had her dimples were pierced. And I was like, I need to save this cat immediately. <laughs> what made you look on Craigslist and Chatsworth for a cat instead of just going to a pound or a rescue? Uh, my girlfriend at the time did it. She was just like, uh, cause we talked about getting a cat, getting a cat. And then she's like, look at this little guy. He's available today. I was like, you know, you're looking at for strippers available today, but, but she just opened it up and just showed me. I was like, Oh, a cat's cute. Yeah. And I lived in the Valley. So I was like, Oh, let's go, uh, let's go check it out. So she's not your girlfriend anymore, but you Correct. did keep the cat. I did get the cat in the custody battle. Are you guys still friends? Yeah. Great friends. We still talk. What about you and your ex? The music. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that was a real laugh at the end. That was real. I could, because I would, I would feel terrible if I gave somebody a fake laugh. Fake laughs. Uh, you I, hear it sometimes. I would rather you fake an orgasm. You. I can do that. Uh, was that too much? You have neighbors, I know. No, it's fine. They're used to it. Damn. Yeah. Well, after hearing that role play you did earlier for the Postmates, I know. Yeah. Can I ask you something? And, and this, and you can feel free to cut this. Yes. I did a show at Flappers like f five years ago and you like popped in. Nice. How'd I do? It was right after a breakup. Five years ago. May maybe longer. Okay. You were dating and feel free to cut this. Yeah. Oh, I, I absolutely bleep. I don't mention anybody's names. This was, you were dating a big actress. I dated a few. <laughs> Precious uh, <laughs> by, by yeah, Sapphire. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you came on and you, you had headphones in and you you went on this like 10 minute thing about love and it was almost like a poem. And it and it the audience, you weren't bombing by any means, but the audience was just captivated. And it was like it was like spoken word almost. And then your last minute, it just started crushing. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't remember this. But there was this buildup. It was like a Tuesday night. Where it was like this just buildup. It was like nothing, nothing, nothing. But you're just talking, talking about love. I think it was fresh after heartbreak. And then like the last minute, it just like everything connected. And it just like was this eruption. I, it might have been undateable days, but I, right? Is that what it's called? Yeah. And I, because I, I, I was a younger comic and I was like, oh, I know this guy. And I, I was captivated because oh, that's awesome. Because every other comic's up there, like, yeah, I needed to get as many jokes in as possible. Things, but it was just like you being you and just sticking to it. And when the payoff hit, I was like, that's, I don't know. I just, I want to know what it was. Oh, I can call fla flappers right now. As for the tape, they, they have all. <laughs> you that think on. they have an archive? I don't. I I think they do. I think they. I know it. the months of all my breakups, so I could tell oh, you. Oh, really? Yeah, there was uh, um, January of 2022. 
wasn't <clears throat> that one. That's recent. There was um, uh, July of 2017. It might have been that one. There was um, fe- January of 2016. Oh, one year. Right back in it. I think it was 2017. I don't know, buddy. I, I just remember you had a hoodie on, uh, Apple uh, headphones, wired, wired, important to know. And yeah. maybe, maybe. I don't that? like the idea of Bluetooth just be sitting in me all the time. Even I, my phones, I don't keep in my pocket. Where do you keep them? I hold it or I put it on a table face down. Smart. What yeah, do your yeah. pockets do all day? Just hang out? Chill. They're just fucking ready when you need me. Just keep my cats in there. Whoa. Some of my best friends. There you go. Yeah. I don't know. I just remember that. Um, well, I, what was the question? You said, can I ask you something? I don't know if it was, um, uh, the question was, can I get into that story? Because oh. I just didn't know if, I don't know. Yeah, that's fine. I just don't want to talk about, I don't like talking about other people's business. So if it's like a breakup about a certain person, I don't feel comfortable talking about the person. Right. But like the situation itself. That really yeah, but I mean, yeah, there's nothing bad to the story other than the fact that you were just talking in this crowd and like everybody was so like, You who room happening? or main room? Main room. Let's, Ooh, I yeah. was doing main room. Main room. Main room, fresh off undateable. And fresh I, off undateable would have been the, Jan- the January 2016. Oh, really? What was the name? We can bleep. Not going to say the name. All right. I There's think, two names. I think I can Google it after. The second one was a bigger actress. That one. It was big. People don't know. I, I've never said this, the second one's name. Really? I mean, just to my friends. I've never talked about it. I just, I always felt insecure about talking about it. Dana was. Carvey. Bleep that, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> the music. Blabbity blue. Bleep it. It's weird that you got it on the first guess, but absolutely. Sorry. Sorry. I just, I have Google for a brain. Mm-hmm. All that Bluetooth. Yes. Yes. So um, I have something to ask you, but is there please. a follow-up? No. <sighs> Whoa. Fuck. What was that all about? What was that? <laughs> I need to lay down. <laughs> Take the Helix Sleep Quiz. Personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge with a 10-night guarantee. Risk-free. Oh. That's nice. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Tony, I'm reading that wrong. It's not a 10-night free risk trial. What is it? It's a 100 nights risk-free trial. If you don't like the mattress, not only do they pick it up from you, they'll do it for free. Why and would, let me tell you something else. Why would you lie? It's American made and it came with a 10 to 15 year warranty. Hell yeah. And remember, oh, wait a minute. So on top of the 100 nights risk-free, you still also get a 10 or 15 year warranty? That's incredible. Helix has been awarded number one mattress picked by GQ and Wired magazine. My friend used to write for Wired. That's the magazine that did the... Um, I think there's some sort of Pamela Anderson centerfold thing she did where she Helix like, is offering up to two hundred dollars off all mattress orders and two free pillows. Go to helixsleep.com slash Tyso because with Helix sleep better sleep, sleep starts sleep. now. Po- judging. <laughs> okay. Um, I gotta say, also I, I've already said this, but we're being goofy here. I use a Helix mattress. I sleep on a Helix mattress. I love a Helix mattress. I haven't slept in ten years. Fuck. Bought a Helix mattress. Well, Slept not no, and you're lying. Don't lie to them. You went 10 years without sleeping, your body looks such That's a claim that I don't want anyone to have to cash. That's not true. Can I finish my sentence? Yes. Fine. Everything he says, Ken will be using it to incur law. I bought a Helix mattress and there was a cum stain on it. <laughs> <laughs> was this after you? Used it. <laughs> okay, well. And it was great. Well, I have a warranty. Better sleep starts now. I, uh, I, people have been requesting you for a bit. Really? Yeah. I've been wanting to do w- this. One of which is my cousin Oliver. Shout out to Oliver. Wow. Um, he goes, Do you know Trevor Wallace? This was right when you were booked to do this. Uh, I don't remember when, within the past few months. Yeah. And then I think you canceled for your ex, whose name was Dana Carvey. Um, no. Believe that. Uh, excuse me. No, I, I texted you. Yeah. And I said, it's not the best day for me. I don't want to cancel, but if we could reschedule. I kind of I kind of pressured you. Yeah, you put the ball in my court. I, I did. I pressured. It, but it, it is what it is. It is what it is. It happens sometimes. That, uh, I don't remember what I was doing, but I remember that I had a very busy weekend and something came up. Um, and I was meaning to reschedule to do it right away, but you couldn't do it the next week. Yeah. And then time had passed. But anyway, before we rescheduled, I was with my my uh, some of my family. And my cousin's like, do you know Trevor Wallace? I'm like, he's coming over later this week. Um, he's a huge fan. Oh, and I'm go. like, uh, uh, I don't want to put words in his mouth. I know he definitely really likes you. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's a huge fan. Hopefully. But, Shout out Oliver. 
but I wanted to have him come over for a second and meet you, but he was then going back to school that week. Bring him out. Oh, it's not like one of those like Ellen things where Oliver <laughs> walks out. It was like, I'm a big fan and I'm here. And then he just sits also on the brown. Yeah, Oliver, come on in for a sec. Oliver, hey, what's up, man? Dude, yeah, hop up up here, dude. Wow, dude. It's good to see you, man. You're my best friend. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah. Can we get this guy out of here? All right. Nice to meet you, Mr. Trevor. Na hey, Mr. Trevor. Yeah. I love you. Oh, God. This doesn't feel legal. Um, it I is love you so much. You know what? Hop up on here. Let's oh. Oh. Hey, quit all those orgasms. <laughs> Keep it down. I'm your neighbor. Well, I'm so sorry. 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 Wow, dude. Even the neighbor heard that. Yeah. He hear hey, he hears it a lot. Whoa. Yeah. I had sex with a man. I'm hearing some trash trucks right now. Yeah, well. So if the walls are thin, everybody's hearing it. Do you. Go. I was going to say, do you walk out? Uh, if you have a nice lady, do you walk her out? And then when she walks away, do you kind of stand on the doorstep for a little bit and wait for the neighbors to acknowledge? And you kind of give like a presidential. No, I like, walk salute? her to her car or her Uber. I don't stand by the door. That was a trap question. You passed. Yeah. Flying colors. But when I walk back, I go into everybody's ring camera. And I go, Did you <laughs> fucking see that? Do you see this chick? Holy shit. Uh. <laughs> I might want to take this out, so mark this. Never mind. I'm just not going to say it. But <laughs> va va voom. <laughs> yeah, I got a new car that goes zero to sixty. It yeah va va voom. It just at any point it goes zero to sixty. Takes some time. Okay, but it gets there. It does zero to sixty. It, it could get to sixty. What about seventy two? I've never tried. I'm wow. sure. What uh, are you allowed to say? What car it is? Are you or does your ex, Dana Carvey, not want to feel jealous? Bleep that. Well, that's what I, I, incidentally, that's what I named it. I named it a Dana Carvey. Dana. Yeah. It's Car a Honda RV, but we call it a Dana Carvey. Theme, Theme music. music. <laughs> wow. So did, earlier, did, go. go yeah, 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 no, sorry, you, 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 you said no, 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 finish. I'm sorry. I just what want to cut you off. You yeah, so go ahead. You go. What you car, asked me. What car did you get? Oh, it doesn't. I don't want to brag. It's a very expensive car. <laughs> um... <laughs> I mean, what are we talking, dude? Are we, are we getting residuals, dude? What are we? Um, maybe. Uh, my my most recent show was was uh, was um, a, a streaming show. They don't do residuals. Oh wow. Um, and uh, I don't know if that's coming back or not yet. It might be, might not be. But manifest. I'm doing, I'm doing another show that's network, and if it hits the amount of episodes, then let's just say I'll get a car that goes zero to seventy. But earlier you were talking about trophies, and I said yep. I know of two trophies that you have. Oh, please tell me. Um, 100,000 YouTube subscribers, and then I, a million YouTube subscribers. I do have those. And I just got my first one. Wow. Do you want to open it on the show? Well, I was thought about I thought about it. I thought about it. Um, I don't want to take too much time with it, but maybe we could jump cut it. But yeah, I wanted to see it. And do it. It's fun. I'm also really, really proud because it just took it three and a half years. Some people have it really fast. Yeah. It just took a really long time, and it's long-form content. And I'm, I don't really care about trophies that much. But I was really excited about Not getting this one. Yeah, I couldn't even tell. Yeah, I mean, I I, I have I one have of those like nine years ago, so it's pretty cool to see. Some yeah, but you were doing moments. short form content. Yeah, no, as a podcast, a hundred thousand is awesome. You should be very proud of yourself. Oh, everyone, stop! Say thank you. Yeah, our podcast just uh, got a plaque too. What do you mean your oh is your podcast a different channel than yeah? Your it used to be on mine, and then we're like, this is too much, and then we it's on its own thing. How long have you been doing your pod? Like three years. Yeah, and you just hit a hundred k. How long ago? Uh, maybe like three months ago. But you already got it? Yeah. Did you open it up on the thing? We did. We did open it up on there. It's revealed. Three, two, one. Ah! Ah! Get this shit out of here. Ah! <laughs> Yeah, it's cool, man. I you should put that on your front door. I mean, don't, but please do. Maybe when I walk girls out, I could walk back in holding it and yeah. just putting it or up you, to all the ring cams. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Or you put it on the front door, but on the backside. So when you're walking a lovely lady out, she goes, "Wow, not only did I just have orgasmic sex, but also 100k subs." I've never been able to get a girl that didn't fuck me just because of my podcast and how that I have 100,000 subscribers. It happens, so they already know. It happens in this town. Rick Glassman, aren't you the guy that has 100K on, on YouTube? Wait yeah. Who cares? I got 100K easy. Yeah, yours is short form content, you little dick fuck. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's my son. That was good. You're booked. I don't know what the role was for, but you're booked. 
I've seen people open these before. They go, ooh, it's heavy. I'm not going to do any of that. You I'm sure. going to act like I get these all the time. You do. Oh, there you go. Yeah, pretend it's like a paper plate. Like, ugh, this this piece of shit. They write you a, what is that? A business card? Mm -hmm. Whoa, maybe the CEO of YouTube is trying to whoa get some of that Rick ass, man. You know what I'm saying? Where should I put it? So I have uh, I have something that I was about to put right there, my my, yeah. my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles thing that I painted when I was a kid. Okay. Um, but I think feel like this could go there. Yeah, I'd put that there. Or what about the wall next to it? Yeah, but that's not on camera. Ooh. I could what put about it, just next to me? Yeah, next to the guests all the time. Yeah. Will you go Trevor Walls featuring special guests? And like, oh, who's the guest? Me. And a hundred thousand of you guys. That's I'm, how you include them in the podcast. Oh, that's right. You know what I should start doing? I should start if I had a um, studio because I don't love people. I don't want to invite people over that I don't kind of know or yeah, that checks out. Whatever. Yeah, um, it would be a cool device to always have a fan come and just be on the show. They're they're on camera audience. Funny. So they can have a microphone. They talk sometimes. They're part of the room cam. You you, you don't tell them they're allowed yeah. to talk if they decide that, you know, every now and then we'll subtitle yeah, it. Yeah, you can always mute their mic just to yeah. really let them know who's still But just have them be there. And then is this someone you could kind of like talk to a little bit? It'd be very funny. Um, a lot of coordinating, but I think you should definitely do it. Presented to Rick Glassman for passing 100,000 subscribers. Interesting. I wonder if you get, if I need to have 100,001, 100,001, because it says passing, not getting. Whoa. That's a grammar error on there. Does it say, oh, say Rick Glass? Oh, so is the channel, oh, it's just Rick Glassman. It's not Take Your Shoes Off. My channel, my Take Your Shoes Off is on um, Rick Glassman. Yeah. But that's smart because now if a woman comes over, she's like, whoa, what is this Take Your Shoes Off thing? You, but you go, yeah, if you had 100,000 girls in, fuck, in here, then I had to take my shoes off for all of them. Yeah, exactly. But now it's Rick Glassman. It's you. Put that on a medallion. Wear it like Flava Flav. Wear that to a Jamba Juice and see if you get served before anyone else. I don't eat, that's just sugar. It's terrible. I used to work at a Jamba Juice in college. It's terrible for you. If there's two, if I never met you, and I mm -hmm. haven't, and I were to try to guess two things about you, I'd be like, this guy used to want to be colorblind, and he probably worked at a Jamba Juice. Yeah, which is not a good place to be colorblind. It is vibrant in that bitch. Oh, the yeah, music. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Like, let me get a pink star. And go, Here you go. It's brown. Like this couch. What's your love life like? Because you seem like a guy that's like a frat guy. In fact, I know that you were in a fraternity. I was. And you have fraternity energy. And I mean that in the most disrespectful way. <laughs> And uh, that was an that was an era of me. I think I went through weird phases. High school, I didn't know who I was. I mean, I had gauges. I don't. don't we're trying not to. It's okay. Sad in the audience. I'm just saying. Just say it. it it's it, it's. There's nothing wrong with being gauges. It's some people are gauges, and I think that's totally fine. In fact, I think it's great. Um, but just I just, oh, I see I just want to acknowledge that like you you did say it as if I used to be like it was some bad thing that needed to be changed, and I think that being gauges is totally fine. In fact, some of my best friends are cats. So go on. <laughs> yes. So, uh, yes. Gauges. Did I just ruin your momentum? No, I just, I don't know where to go from here. You that's, know? That's one of my flaws. Let, <laughs> <laughs> let me load real quick. <laughs> Neighbors heard it again. Stop having so many orgasms. But, uh, yeah, call, so I went to college and I joined a fraternity, loved it. It was great. And then three years, I'm like, I'm burnt out. This is not a sustainable life. So I don't need natty lights for breakfast. For I all the kids eggs. that are watching that, um, because I assume your fan base is kids that are about to be going to college or in college and they're uh, considering going to fraternity, uh, pros and cons of, of fraternity after the fact, not during. After looking back, what were the pros? What okay, were the cons? Gotcha. Looking back, you meet some of your best friends. You know, those are guys I still talk to today. Those are some the looking back, it's that. Uh it's really that. Good connections, good building. It's a lot of fun. It made my college experience a lot of fun. I had people the first week of school when you're not in anything, you don't know anybody, you feel like a fucking nerd. And then you like join this fraternity and you see some guy with your letters on on the same campus. You just fist bump each other. What do you the mean quad. fucking nerd? Answer me honestly. Cause I know they're like, what, what well, is not a, a nerd? You just felt alone. You're just like, you're on a big campus. There's 40,000 right. people going to this university and you know, your roommate and maybe your RA who's definitely a narc smells like eggs. You're like, I don't want to be friends with these guys. So mm. you're walking around this campus, you see all these people having fun and high five and everywhere. You're like, whoa, how do I get that? How do I get the high fives and people to like a high five me in and public me? before class? Everyone's like, who the hell is this guy? He just high fived a senior. Would you ever high five a stranger? No. no. What about now? Yeah. Why? What's the difference between you now? I'm a grown and man. 
I think now I care. I think people need high fives. I think morale boosts. I think that's actually, I, I could get into that. Yeah, you know, because everybody's just so in their head about like, what do I have to do next? I have this meeting at four. Why is Bluestone Lane closed right now? I'm hungry. What do I, and then you give them a quick little, hey, 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 hey. Yeah. And they're like, you know what? That's all life is. A high five doesn't have to actually be a high five. It's, I think it's an acknowledgement. An acknowledgement. Like, you know, like even a little point. Like you, you were walking and you see somebody and you go, and they go like this. Yeah. No words were said, silent film, but they had a better day or at least moment after that. Yeah, I feel like I feel like you got to be careful with those. There's something that I've noticed, but I also want to acknowledge Brian Regan does a bit about it. Yeah. But when, you, when you're uh, on, a, uh, on an elevator and someone gets on and how you have to acknowledge them. But uh, have you, do you know this bit? I don't, but this is hilarious. He goes, um, for audio only, you'll have, to, uh, you'll have to just guess. But he goes, when someone walks on, you go, you have to go. Yeah. You know, you got to raise your you eyebrows, to. nod. It's insane not to. And then they go. Sometimes they even tell you to hit the, the number. Could, you know what I do? I have a move where I go on an elevator. If I'm going on and they're already on there and they go, uh, which floor? I go, could you just push them all, please? And you, how, it usually gets a laugh. That hits? Yeah. Yeah. I feel really confident on an elevator. And then you stare at them. No, no. don't get off. I don't want to I, I, I don't want to negate your joke, but I also want to be honest about this because I know people think my comedy is trying to make people uncomfortable, and it's not. It's not It at just all. happens to, it's to happen funny. sometimes. You're a great act to watch. I, Thanks, I saw man. you the other night at the improv. So I saw funny. you the other night at the improv, and you crushed. Thanks, man. Um, and last night, my friend George, shout out to George with his Instagram handle up here. In fact. Oh, hey. Holy right shit. Oh, that's why. Wow. Hey, <laughs> wow. Legitimately <laughs> surprised. <laughs> Legitimately surprised. Call Chris George. Me, you need me. <laughs> call me. Call on your Holy brother. shit. You're killing it even harder. I honestly thought that was a recording, man. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, got, I, I didn't know whether to stand up and applaud or fucking... George, I haven't yeah, seen you up, so long. Wow. Good to see you, buddy. <laughs> Holy shit, George. Adam, how you doing, man? Great, man. He was at Supernova, and he oh, said yeah. that you crushed it. Supernova's great. I yeah. Place. yeah. Um, elevators, uh, I used to say, uh, I used to feel like there's some girls that are maybe are out of your league, and you're like, they wouldn't give you the, the, the chance because you don't have enough followers. Yeah. Uh, and I'd be like, if I could just get stuck in an elevator with this girl for 45 minutes. I'm in. Just to give your personality. Just she ha she has she has to. I'll 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 do push all the buttons. She'll be like, oh my god, this guy's just, oh this guy's such a goof. Yeah. What's your opening line? It, so it just stuck. It's it's like not working. Well, it depends. None I mean, of the buttons. You want to role play with me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm the hot girl. Well, I mean, do you want to be the hot girl? Always. I am a hot girl. But well, in that, this situation, it's me so approaching I'm, hot girl. I'm Rick. No, no. I'm, you're the hot girl. Well, thank you. We're in. Um, okay, I'm on my phone. Uh, and it's I'll, in my pocket. I'll Bluetooth. walk in and then and then so we're on an elevator and then um, then when we're going when, while we're going uh, down, it'll it'll uh, it'll you know shake a little and they'll be like, what the fuck, you know, like you'll be a little scared. Okay, what was that? I gotta walk in first. Okay, I was just being a hot girl in general. Okay. Ding. iPhone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, me too. Nice. Oh, I guess I got a text from my son. Hmm. <laughs> he said I'm the best daddy in the world. Oh, it's very wholesome. What's your son's name? Honestly, it's. I feel like I've known him for so long. It's too late to ask, and I don't remember, and I don't know what to do. I'm not. I just call him little buddy. He's yours? Not necessarily. I just trying to flirt with you and I don't have a son. I just thought it would be funny to have you think of me as daddy. Whoa. What just happened? Um what is this? Did you plan this? That was my heart. Okay. I that's very <laughs> Excuse me. Farted. Omelet? Yes. What's your name? <laughs> Christine. Well, Christine, I'm Omelette, and it's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> oh, my God. It is really bad in here. Can you, like, hit the fire button to see if, like, somebody can save us? Like, I have a nail appointment at three. Fire, 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 fire. Okay, this is not working. Can you, like, try to pry it open? You seem strong enough. Sure. And then I would open it, mm -hmm. and it would be halfway, 
and and be, between floors and it'd be too scary to have you go through because it might go through yeah so i would just be like i'd love for you just to wait a little bit um you know i couldn't help but notice you have beautiful um breasts <laughs> i was gonna say energy oh but yeah you're i paid a lot for these how much 10k 10k what each Twenty thousand. yeah interesting math. that you would tell me how much you paid per tip? Well, I got one at first, just thinking see, it'd be see. fine for angles. And then I was like, I should just do both. Was there anything about you wanting to see how the surgeon did to make sure that, all right, I'm ready for him to do the other one? Yeah. How long a, did you just have one tit? It was a commitment thing, like three weeks. Oh, that's not bad. But it's winter, so you could kind of fake it. Well, how long were you out after the first tit you put in? Like, how long did you have to recover? Oh, I was out that night. I was letting everybody feel it. Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's so quick. Can't let the money go to waste. Where'd you get the money? What do you do for a living? Well, oh, I get it. Yeah, I don't really like to talk about sure. it. But. Are you ashamed of being an accountant? I have a lot of pretty good accountant friends that don't like to talk about being them being an accountant. Yeah, I work at Bank of America. Okay. And what do you guys think? <laughs> Everyone just turned it off during that. <laughs> yeah, like this is, this is getting interesting. Uh, but yeah, that's how, usually how I meet girls. Just a quick No, banter. elevators. Elevators. Ele okay. And are you going anywhere within... I just go to nice places and I go in the elevators. Our uh, where we do our podcast, there's an elevator, but it's two floors, so yeah, it's not enough. You, yeah, how many do you need? Like six or seven? Just mm, ten. Ten. Wow. Um, so you're meeting a lot of women in like you go to the downtown. Soho House because oh wow, it's, it's all the way up. I went there once. Was in an elevator with Jason Statham. Did you get his number? No, but we fucked each other mentally. I did get his number. What's his number? I'll believe 805. it. I'm calling it. 805. Hello. Jason. What's going on? Hey, buddy, it's me. I just wanted to, I'm just checking in. I remember we shared an elevator at the Soho house once, and I really just want to make sure that was you. And I was kind of curious if there was any sexual chemistry in there. I kind of maybe read the room wrong. Is this Ding Del Rey? <laughs> uh, well, some people call me that in bed. Uh, to be serious. Oh, be serious? Oh, no, this is Trevor Wallace. Oh, uh, the guy who makes the the guy who makes the ice cream videos. Yes, I do make ice cream videos. There's there is videos. See that you know? ice cream, you scream out to make your girl cream. <laughs> what the yeah, yeah I, for you on TikTok. Oh wow. I've, what what is I've it? Also, I've you, also seen you at the park. At the park, I do go to the park yeah. on Tuesdays. Yeah, doing push-ups inside of women. <sighs> Jason, I thought we would leave this out, but th I do be doing push-ups inside of women. Well, here's the funny thing about doing stuff in parks. It always ends up on the internet. Who said that? I think that was Danny DeVito. Lucky guess. Was it you? Was he a Jew? No, was it you? Danny DeVito also. Uh, fellow. Oh, Jay. yeah. I've been Danny DeVito this entire time. Wait a minute. What? I always knew you're a great actor. I mean, wait, is this he, Danny DeVito or Jason Statham? He's role playing. Let him have this. This is Jason Statham playing Danny DeVito on the Take Your Shoes Off podcast. How did you know what podcast this was? You can tell. Lucky guess. <laughs> he saw it in a park. Ask him about Rose. By the way, ask him about Rose I've only the said the word. I've said Lucky Guess twice because I'm starring in a new film called... Lucky Guest. Well, you know, I saw it in the trades. Uh, tell me what it's like to, to be married to Rose... Good Guess. Ro Lucky Guess. Uh, well, tell me what it's like. Well, good Guess is... Good Guess is the sequel. <laughs> What's it like being married to Rosie Huntington Weekly, the beautiful Victoria's Secret model? Oh, it's amazing. I just hope she doesn't fuck some guy and, and, name, him after my, and name him after my baby. Yeah. Even though my baby's already got a name. But I could definitely see a world where she fucks some lead singer of like, you know, My goo -goo Chemical dolls. Romance yeah. or oh. Goo Goo Dolls or Vertical Horizon. That would be a real shit show. Hey, Jason. She's everything you, Jason. She's everything you want. She's everything you need. She's going to name. She's going to fuck someone behind your back and name and name him after your baby. That's my biggest fear, honestly, too. I don't, I'm not dating a Victoria's Secret girl, but I. I think I will eventually. Well, not with that attitude. You know what? You're right. Jason, I, what I need you to do is DM me right now. The same thing, Adam Levine, DM that girl. I need you to be like, fuck, you're so fucking hot. That body's hot. And then I'm going to screenshot that and then post it and be like, ladies, if you don't come at me, j Dog, stay dog, will. And that's our nickname for each other. I'll definitely do that. Just 
will you make a cameo for my granddad? Oh, I got you. He's a big fan? No, I just needed to fill that moment with something. All right, so, Jason, it was nice. So, it was. I, I thought Trevor was joking that he knew you, but turns out he knows you, and that's very yeah. cool. And and it's funny that you don't know your kid's name either because we were just talking about this guy in an elevator that forgot his son's name. But it was nice. Kids are like, kids, kids are like flavors of pop tarts. There's too many, and there's too many to remember. Go see Lucky Guess in theaters <laughs> this Friday. It's me, Danny DeVito, Kirk Cameron, Kirk Douglas, Tom Selleck, Tom Bergeron, Alfonso Ribeiro, Candace Cameron Bure, Mario Lopez, and the kid, the black kid from Angels in the Outfield. <laughs> Damn, Mario Lopez. Trevor, Trevor, I hope to run into you in an elevator very soon. Oh, Stay uh, up, keep, and next time you make an ice cream video, remember to say one thing to yourself. Mmm, tastes just like a creamy. Fuck, I'm I'm currently enrolled in the Groundling, so next time, <laughs> next hey. next time I talk to you, huh? I have a question for you, Jason. Are you talking about Milton Davis Jr. or are you talking about Danny Glover? Milton Davis Milton, Jr. Milton, right. Not to be confused with Sammy Davis Jr. or Freddie Prince Jr. or <laughs> Carl's Jr. or <laughs> Carl's Jr. <laughs> or really any Sammy Davis Jr., Carl Jr., all the yeah, the same. I mean, if you would ask me to rank my favorite juniors, <laughs> I just I just did. Ken Don't Griffey Ken Griffey isn't even in the top five. Look, Junior Ken Griffey. Huh? Junior Seau Jr. I thought you yeah. loved Seattle. I'm a big wait. I do. I've you know the Space Needle was. All right, well, I, it was nice to, nice to chat no, with you, Jason. The first, the first. I have a Kama Sutra book out right now called "Fuck Like Statham," and on page six there's a move called the Space Needle. You know what you do there? <laughs> Could you give us a hint and then we'll guess the rest? Yeah, you go on top of the Space Needle. You take your dick out. <laughs> And, and then, you find someone you find someone who consensually wants to fuck it. Lucky guess in theaters this right. Friday. Nice to meet you, Mr. Statham. I'll see you in an elevator soon. All okay. right. Oh, see that's you, a log, a good log line. Yeah, I'll see you at the Space Needle, huh? Yeah, that's on the poster, Lucky Guess, this right. Friday. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so me and Statham are pretty pretty cool. Yeah. Um that was like a what, three minute conversation? It felt like three and a half. Yeah, I mean, and that's just we share an elevator together. You share a lot of bonds in an elevator, right? That is that is true. It's an energy. You can't even pick it. It just happens. Are you a good singer? Yeah. Can I hear something? Ha 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 ha. Ah ha ha ha. La da da da. La da da da. Do 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 I thought you were doing Sister Act for a minute. Uh, it was it was. Do you know what I'm talking about? Gym really? class heroes. Da 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 da. Da, da, da. No, I'm not a good singer. In Sister Act 2, they go, la, 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 la. And then the other person does the same. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. 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 La, la, And then it goes, do, 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 do. And then the guy goes. Well, for copyright, we probably shouldn't sing the whole thing. It's okay. I buy, no, I pay for all this stuff. Oh, okay, It's very expensive. Yeah, I well, the car you have. Uh, it's pricey. Well, it doesn't go to zero to 70 yet. Not yet. Not that I'm aware of. But that's right before the, the, the guy goes, oh, happy day. And then and then um, Sister Mary Clarence goes like, oh, happy day. And then he yeah. kind of gets into it. Do you remember the scene? No. When I'll, I'll show it to you. Mm -hmm. When Jesus washed. We'll put it up too and we'll, we'll, okay. I'll do the voice for it. When Jesus washed, washed my sins away. And then they go, la, 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 la. And then he gets into it. And then he goes, he told me how. And then, you know, that, that, but that's right. And then it gets to the part that everyone loves. And then, then he goes into the audience and he like bumps the hip to the, like, he's like, he's feeling it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, and everyone turns like, what the fuck? Oh, goosebumps this, thinking about it. And this is in Lucky Guess out this Friday. I don't, I want, I want, uh, no, no. This is Sister Act 2, um, Back in the Habit. Oh, yeah. You know, it's a great singing scene. There's two that I can think of. School of Rock, right? When the kids are singing. Also, Step Brothers. When You're talking about Adam Scott is singing with the family. Oh, yeah. That's a great one. That's great. A great singing scene. Also, I liked at the end when they were, when, uh, they were singing when, when uh, Will was playing the drums. Or right. John was playing the drums yeah. and uh, that, Will was singing. That one made both my nipples erect. Yeah. That was a good one. Yeah. With the, the chime. <laughs> So what do you, so somebody like you who has a big online audience yep. tours the country? Oh yeah. 
You doing theaters? You doing clubs? Doing theaters and some clubs. I like clubs. I think comedy and clubs is prime. That's where comedy belongs. But the theaters are payday, baby. Well, I'm just playing with your erect nipples right now. By the way. Oh God, fuck! Get the neighbors. Keep it down. Sorry. So, uh, we're, we're talking about the coming or the singing to keep it down. Uh, it doesn't matter. I want to get back to the real shit. Tell me about theaters, clubs, theaters, your experience. Theaters are, I mean, theaters are fucking unreal. The, the fact that I'm even, sorry to cuss, I didn't mean to. Uh, it's okay. Theaters are unreal. It, 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 it like, it, it blows my mind to look out you and see this many You know, I was joking that you people. could swear, right? I told you when you were, I told no, Jeremy was walking and not to swear. Yeah, I was born uh, Mormon, so I don't really do any of that. Well, yeah. Okay. I, I don't, yeah. I mean, I think unlike being, um, uh, 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 you can say it. What was it? Gaydar? Gayish? Ga ga gaping? What was the gay pun? Gay jizz. Gay jizz. You said it. Rick, you said um, it. But, I said gay jizz. But being Mormon is a choice. And I know that's controversial. Yeah. Well, in Los Angeles, I do it to get booked more, and I haven't booked anything. Right. So well, maybe, I, may, I might may, ditch it. Maybe the Book of Mormon. No, but we have a good time here. Theme music. Oh, yeah! Why don't you tell me about the, uh, the theaters before I fucking lose my mind <laughs> the theaters are the theaters are awesome because it's you're looking out at this group of people who all at once were like this is our plans for the night we are going to see this guy and you know i i honestly get in my own head i'll sometimes i'll sit in the very back row of a theater before a show starts I love doing that and just to take a moment in to see what it's like what they're looking at yeah to feel like the energy they're feeling yeah and yeah. i'll fucking tear up tampa theater first first place i did that i was sitting in the very back row of this gorgeous theater and i was like damn it's because when you're on stage, you're not thinking like that. You're just thinking about your act. But this was like the only time I really, for the first time, was able to sit in the back and like appreciate what I'm doing and the feeling of it. And then to see that sold out, I mean, blew blew my mind. I, I think the theaters are fun as fuck, but I do like the clubs because the energy is unbeatable in there. You know, theaters are, at least for me personally, sure. I mean, it, it varies every night, but for the most part, every club you're going to hit a certain threshold, a, a, a certain decibel, dare I say, of energy in there, right? Like the Laugh Factory, the improv, those are built for comedy. They, when, when jokes are hitting, it's electric. But some theaters, it's like fucking the Wiggles on Ice were there last night. And it's like, they're not worried about acoustics. They might be. I haven't seen their act lately. They could be. But some theaters- I get what you're saying. Wiggles on Ice is a big, it, it, it does matter. The, the resonance is like part of like a character in the show. But I know what you're saying a lot about Yeah, them. but theaters is just like, they're just meant for a show. I mean, they all have great sound design, but in terms of like the energy and like that like packed in comedy club feel is unbeatable. What, what makes you want to do a theater instead of a club? Because you could, you don't have to do as many shows in that venue. I think that you can hit more- uh, locations and kind of yes. really check yeah. off more cities so it's more efficient but i also do think it does help with the branding and really lets other people know like oh this is legit this guy's really doing the damn thing you know when you were in arizona you were in the back what theater oh this was tampa 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 it was just called the tampa theater um uh so stupid doesn't realize that tampa's in florida not arizona uh, uh they're pretty similar but do if you, you if you if you were in a lineup like a mugshot lineup and there's people from tampa and phoenix next to each other you'd be you guys are all in the same fret right thanks dude yeah, yeah. i appreciate you trying to get my back with that but i meant i dropped the ball no 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 you're good um leave it in sorry i didn't mean to give notes no that's good i want people to see because a lot of this is gonna never i shouldn't say it. it's gonna sound really pretentious mm-hmm so I'm not, I guess I shouldn't say you it. You should say it. Zero no, to 60. I'm not going to say Zero it. Zero to 60, Rick. A lot of people watch me and think this guy's perfect. And I do think it's important to showcase. Like basically like I make a choice to not, to post some ugly pictures on Instagram. Like Everyone's show them what well. you are. Even it out. Yeah. Humble yourself and your audience. Listen, I love treats. One of my favorite desserts is a slice of humble pie, but, but I'm trying to limit my gluten. Yeah. But sometimes you need an extra slice. <laughs> and you need to wake up. Oh, I thought I, was, I have a shirt that says sometimes you need an extra slice. I thought I was wearing it. That comes out this Friday too, also with Jason Statham. Like a guess. Wow. So you're in the back, you're crying. Is, is it uh, uh, crying because you're uh, of pride of yourself? Is it uh, excitement? Is it an adrenaline? Can you everything. explain what it is? It's what everything. It's, it's every moment of my parents being proud of me for doing it, for, for when I told them I was quitting my job to be like- At Jamba Juice? Uh, no, th this was in Los Angeles. Jamba Juice was like last week. I'm still there. But when I told them that I wanted to quit my day job when I moved to LA to do this full time, and they were like, we knew this was coming. We support it and doing that. Mm. And then just the thoughts of like videos getting, 
you know, 50 views and then paying money on Facebook to get ads and like get my videos out there and then like have people see it and then have people support me and then selling 20 tickets at a show to selling a hundred to the now sitting in the back of the Tampa theater, which I think is like 1,200 or something like that. It, it just, it's just all these emotions. Cause you're just working with your head down for so long that you pick your head up and you're like, this is the shit I dreamed of mm. and I'm doing it. That's cool. Yeah. So I don't know, but, but, but I take a moment of that and then I go, okay, cool. Let me just get back to the shit. Cause I don't want to be the guy that's ever too much like boasting in what I have where I'm like fucking the venue for the night. I know it's the one. I know what you're saying. Yeah. And I think if I personally, if we were doing this podcast in my house, there is a room where there's an absurd amount of like posters of me in there. And I would be, I would have that same thing. Um, being grateful isn't boasting. Being proud of yourself isn't boasting. I, th I th well, I think what I'm most proud of is that I'm proud of myself, and I and I'm not seeking the validation of others. I think I oftentimes seek validation from others because of crowds and because of views and internet. Like they are in control oh. of my happiness. So for the one for the first time in a while, I sat back and it was like I did this, mm. not crowds cheering for me. Right. That's something I want to work work on. I don't know why I seek validation in others and not myself, but like that was a moment where I was like, oh, this is you did this. It's addicting. Having having people tell you that you're great feels as good relatively as people telling you that you're not and that hurting your feelings. It just control it's just it controls how I think for the next day or night or whatever. Could I offer you a, a perspective that Please. I have talked about on this podcast before that I had a few years ago that really has um I'm I can't pretend that uh external validation doesn't feel good. Um I I can tell you, at least relatively, I'm not really seeking it. I do not need it. For the external? Same, yeah, yeah. For the same reason that that the external, like maybe criticism or, or disrespect doesn't really hit me either. Um, I did a show on a Friday night and it was so good. And then I did a Saturday and the manager of the club asked if the feature could headline and I could do 20 minutes. Wow. And I was, I felt bad. And um, also at the time I didn't feel comfortable doing an hour. And I was like, oh yeah, that's, I know how to do 20 minutes. That's okay. Mm -hmm. And I felt really bad. And I, what I realized was um, the killing, like crushing a show and then bombing have kind of the same thing in common, which is uh, it, the feeling doesn't last. Oh yeah. Uh, it's just two days later, you're just back to wherever you think, whoever you think you are. Um, and that kind of put like a logical perspective into, instead of being like, I know I shouldn't, but I know I shouldn't want this external stuff, but I do like, and it's hard to, it's hard to, uh, stop an emotional response to something. If it can't be trumped by logic, at least for me, unless I find something that logically makes something contradictive, like, well, that doesn't make sense. Then you kind of like, I feel it's kind of like when you when you have a, a routine of something and you're eating bad and you're like, I know I should eat good, but whatever. And then you find out your cholesterol is high or you realize you're allergic to something or whatever it may be. Logic is like, oh, I, sh I, it's, it's bad to do this. Like right. you need to have that kind of perspective. And then that made me realize, oh, I, I, the only thing that lasts is the feeling that I feel about myself. And it made me logically kind of check in with the things that I don't like about myself that I can maybe try and change. And as corny as this is, and like, I think it's even like an AA uh, point, but like, accept the things that are. Um, it also, I feel like made my comedy a lot better because you're on stage sometimes and things aren't working the way you maybe thought they would or wanted them to. And then you're not present anymore because you're thinking about like, yeah, oh, yeah. they don't like this. Exactly. Or, um, but it's like, whatever, this is what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, and just, it really helps me be more present because whatever I am, including the bad stuff, I'm supposed to be right now. Because that's, I mean, that's how I am. There's no way yeah. to not be that. Right. No, I, I think that's really helpful because you always want to chase that high of like getting off stage and feeling those, those positive endorphins. You want to chase that high of like a video doing well with views and you want a, a podcast to do well. But it's, it's, it'll go away. I, I mean, I chase being present. That's great. Truly, because like I, I know, you know, for a while when I was doing this podcast, uh, like my ex now would ask how it was or somebody said, Dana oh. Carvey. Bleep it. Sorry. Um, but, and this is more recent X, not that one, but still believe that name. 
Okay. But um, I would always be like, I don't know. I don't know. And now I know how to answer them. I still don't know. I don't know how people are going to like it. I don't know if it was a great episode. All I know is I could be like, I know I was really like connected. Like I know I had a good time with this person. Yeah. Okay. That's the only, only thing that's in my control, yeah. at least with the tools I have right now. I don't know how it was. And I don't want to answer that as if that's the gauge, if that's the response. Pardon me. Uh, I know. Excuse me. Gauges? Response. If it's if it's as great as it not, I don't know. I had I was present. I had a good time with this person. I wasn't asking things just to ask. I was okay. listening. Yeah. Um, and that's what I prioritize also on stage. Like you brought up, and I take that as a compliment. You like the first whatever you were talking, and then you weren't getting that many laughs, but people yeah. were watching. Like that's that's I don't think comedy is about laugh stand up. I don't think stand up is about laughs. I do think it's it matters. In fact, it matters a lot. Maybe number two. I think uh, number one is is being honest and present. And honest doesn't mean only telling true stories, but it means the intention of why you're telling the story is honest. I want to be telling you this. I want to be connecting this way. Yeah. Um, then it's not, it's not about the laughs because when it's about the laughs and you don't get them, it's distracting. Well, the reward is laughs. I'm not, no, I, I don't know. I, 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 but I, do you, go ahead. you think the reward of being honest and being true to yourself is the funny? I don't think it's enough. It's not enough to just go up there and be honest. Any, if there are people that could go up there and be honest and present and true to themselves, it doesn't mean they should be doing comedy. Obviously, right. be funny. There's not a part of me that thinks I'm not a funny guy. I know I'm funny. Mm -hmm. I'm funny. So I'm not trying to be that all saying. the time. Yeah. Um, a lot of times I try to be, but like that's silly and wanting to play. But like I'm funny. To me, what's for the longest time I used to do the silliest, wildest experimental shit because I needed it to be special and different and funny. Mm -hmm. What I was missing was just be fucking, just do, be you. Yeah. Um, I feel that's the harder part. Um, so I don't chase laughs. I just chase, did I, did I behave this way on stage because I was scared so I was putting up a defense and I was playing these characters? Or was I this way on stage because this is what I wanted to talk about? Yeah, I think finding my lane was definitely a big switch and I felt more comfortable when I really did start focusing on my own stuff. It's like the material went from like trying to impress these people to like, this is true to me. What was an example of something you were doing that was trying to impress people? I, I just, there was jokes, but they weren't, they weren't true to me, but they were just like, they could have been like, I got a note from a comedy club when I first moved here in like, maybe like 2016. And this guy was like, the booker of the comedy club goes, you get laughs, but there, there's no substance. It's mm -hmm. not true to anybody. Like anybody could tell those jokes and it's not like, that doesn't make it a Rick Glassman joke. It doesn't make it a Trevor Wallace joke. It's just a joke. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, whatever. In my head, I didn't get it. Cause I was like, sure. Like I still got laughs. I still did well. But then as time went on, I was like, oh, it's, it wasn't true to me. I was just saying funny. I was just saying things. Like it doesn't matter what I was saying because it wasn't true to Trevor Walls. But now I think I do jokes that like, if somebody else were to do, people would be like, oh, that sounds like a Trevor Walls bit. Oh, that sounds like a little, it sounds like he's trying to do a Trevor Walls thing. And that just became by like, really knowing what my lane was. And Could I, you explain your lane? I think it's kind of like, uh, maybe like early, like Nick Swartzen a little bit, kind of just like bro-ish, but it's like- It's funny, to, to, I, I'm not meaning to call you out. I just think it's interesting that you're saying, I finally have my own lane. And the first thing you used to describe it was another person. Yeah, I'm delusional, but <laughs> <laughs> but I but I'm trying to explain it in a way that you would understand. Uh huh. I, I want I, I like things explained that way. Yeah, I mean, but like if you took a bite of a burger and I'm like, how is it? You'd be like, oh, it reminds me of In and Out. I wouldn't be like, you idiot. Yeah, I probably would. Well, I wasn't calling you. Do you want to go In and Out after this? Um, I have been in the mood for In and Out. Sounds great, right? But, but okay. logically, maybe All my right. cholesterol's high. It is. I'm your doctor. Take two. Uh, what, what, what is my lane? It's I'm kind of mid Nick Swartzen. No, yeah. I don't think Trevor, I don't think you're getting what I'm saying. What, describe it. I was doing a throwaway bit. Go back. We're in live. Your lane. Theme. Don't explain it like Nick Swartzen. Explain it like what is, by the way, this question I'm asking you would be a very difficult question for me to answer. So I have no obligation. And the question is describe what is, what but it, no, well, not because I want to know your lane, but be, this is, uh, specifically, but because you realized you found it. So like, could mm. you explain when you found, your, what is it that you found? Whether it's your lane or whatever else it is that you found, what is that? What do you mean by that? I just found my voice and jokes that felt true to me and what I look like and what I give off. And I don't say anything that's like, well, that's weird from this guy. I think I found jokes that are, I, I, I don't oftentimes think that I take a big swing 
uh. on stage and people are like, well, Jesus Christ, this guy's talking about this. You know, it's very just, I think it's just true to me. Whether it's, it, it feels like the audience is looking through my eyes to be like, oh, that did happen to him. Oh, you know, like, the, like the, it feels like I'm just telling stories about my weeks to my friends. I'd like to make an observation. Yes. Um, I, and I think it's very interesting. You, it seems like from what you're saying, you are writing jokes based on casting in a way. You're like aware of how they see you. And I'm the, I, Trevor, am the type of guy that, so I want to build jokes around that. Yeah. Is that kind of like what you're saying? S kind of, but I, but I think I cast in myself. Of, that of course. Checks. But like I found the role that fit for me. Before this, I was trying different shoes. Before this, I listened, you know, I listened to way too much Bill Burr's podcast when I first moved to LA. So I, would I be the guy up there taking big swings or be the guy being like, fucking yeah, women, and, you know, that was Great, Bill Burr. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But I think I was influenced. I was kind of just like a chameleon. So if mm -hmm. I listen to that, if I listen to like too much Michael Che, like I would find myself just like kind of wanting to do more of that. But like now I don't listen to anybody who does comedy like I do. So it's just true to me. I'm picturing a chameleon that doesn't change colors, but just changes act like voices. Like if it's a, a ventriloquist. No. So uh, you writing stuff based on how you feel you look and what you want, what you give off. Is there something to the you making so many videos and seeing yourself and editing yourself? I assumed at least at first you were editing yourself yeah, or going through them, making notes. Mm -hmm. You were. Mm -hmm. So you're watching yourself constantly. So you're seeing, oh, this is, this is my pocket maybe. Was there anything about videos that helped translate from you kind of uh, being a chameleon to like, oh, I think I see what I am based on watching videos. Yeah, well, th I mean, that was just kind of just trial and error. I tried so many different types of videos and different styles. And then when one hit, it was like a character-based video that I did about the skate shop, um, Zoomies. There's in every goddamn mall in America. Uh, I did that and people really resonated with it. So I kept running with that. I kept doing more of that. But then I didn't want to get like, you know, cornered as just that guy. So then I tried other characters and other things. And then a lot of them struck out. And then every once in a while, one would hit. And I'm like, cool, now I can be versatile. So I think the whole, whole versati versatility, whoa, big word. I, I think the whole versatility is just from trial and error and trying on a lot of hats until you build one hat. I think who I am isn't one person. It's like five different types of people in one. It's like th there's parts of me that are like, oh, that's the college Trevor. Oh, this is the Trevor that's, you know, has a heart and feelings. And this is a part of the Trevor that's just like, uh, you know, business oriented. This is a part that's just maybe high and loves observational humor. Do you show all of those Trevors in one set or is it based on the night or based I on what you want to do? Uh, I try to do it all in one night. If you see a set, you're not just like, oh, that guy was dirty start to finish. I think it's like, oh, there's some dirty stuff in there. Oh, there's some observational stuff that happened today. Oh, there's a little quirky, goofy. I don't want to say I do quirky, goofy because, you know. That's I, my lane. Yeah, that's more, you know, Rick Lassen. Cut to me on stage with a puppet. Don't really cut to it. <laughs> Please do. Cut to it. Maybe we'll put up a picture. Yeah. Um, but I think that's what I, th and, but I think that's for me, that's what makes it happy because the dirty jokes hit the hardest. But when I get off stage, I'm like, yeah, but it feels like it's low hanging fruit. Like I want to, I want the observational stuff to me is like my favorite. Just like, do you have any observational dirty stuff? You ever notice that a woman's clit doesn't really feel good when you're coming in her fucking titty? <laughs> right. <laughs> the <down>. music. <laughs> Write that down. Um, yeah, there's definitely observational stuff like that too. But let me hear one. Uh, just like, unless you're chicken. <sighs> Sorry, pescatarian. Um, but I think Choice. just something, uh, one, one of the, the, I had this as a bit, but then I made it into a video is just, uh, if, oh, if you offer a woman water after sex and she doesn't take it mentally, you're like, oh, I didn't put in work. She's fucking, she's, she's had way better than that. You don't want any water. You, you, you just don't think I laid it down like that. Like I just feel that way. Sip. I feel that way if a girl doesn't go pee after you have sex with her. What does that mean? I mean, that's she did an saying. orgasm. No, that's what I'm saying. You know, you're like, uh, how do I? Yeah, I don't care if she drinks water, but she better take a shit when I'm done. Something. Uh huh. I want her to be writing a soliloquy. I want her smoking cigarettes on the balcony, doing haiku poems to the pigeons. Could you explain what a haiku poem is? Because I don't remember. Three, is five, it three, three. something? Three, I think five, it's three, three. Five, three, five, three. Three beats, five beats. Three. Why is that a thing? Why, what about a, a, a bourgeois, which is 272? Like what's 353? Five, three? Why is there no something idea. to it? It sounds good. It sounds like a BMW. Probably own one of those. 353. Three. Zero sixty, yeah, 
but I feel like uh, that that's a good level of observation where it's not just like, and then she took my cock. And it's like, see, I like that. You do? Let me hear a bit about how the girl took your cock. And then she took my cock. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. Jason Satham. Uh, is that real laughter? Uh, no, but fake I have. laugh. But I have. You have a good fake laugh. I am a. I, Rick I, Glassman. I mean, I don't just do drama, by the way, which I don't know if you knew this. I'm an award-winning dramatic actor. I mean, I know you think I'm like Do you this. have awards? Were you a nom- What? Oh, wow. Yeah. Is As that, we see it on Amazon Prime. Is that heavy? Mm-hmm. It's actually unbelievably heavy. Oh, wow. Do you need to, like, wash your hands first? Oh, wow. Oh, my God. I mean, what is this, 47 kilos? I'm surprised I didn't break the table. Oh, wow. Oh, God. I mean, this is... Oh, this is this is actually heavy. Yeah, this told is, you. I mean, I'm just insanely buff, and I'm doing this because right. I know you have a high female audience who is now going to DM me. HFA. Saying, this is big. Yeah, thanks, man. That's why. So, I, why don't you have this on the hood of your car, your new car? I got it from my car. That's I, oh, I just pretended it was my bad. A yeah, it looks like the, award. It, it literally looks like you just got a Rolls Royce emblem and then put it on this. Thank you. Is this a real award? Yeah. Thank you so much to the Hollywood Critics Association. Thank you, Amazon. Thank you, Lizzo. Say hi, Lizzo. She's probably watching right now. Say hi, Lizzo. (laughs) I got to work with these actors. Once they became part of it, it became really one of the most special experiences I've ever had doing this. And so I'm I'm very, very lucky to be sharing the stage with them. You guys want (laughs) to... The show is very important to us. Um, I just, I, it's, my under, it's my understanding that Lizzo is watching tonight. And I, I would be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity to invite her to come on to my podcast. So Lizzo, that's the Take Your Shoes Off podcast. It's more important now than ever. Also, it's my understand that Lizzo's watching. I, I'll say hi, hi to her, and also if Harry Styles is watching, hello to you too. Can I tell you a secret? Uh, if anyone is watching at home, Lizzo or anyone, uh, if- This is real? It looks like you got this on Hollywood Boulevard. Thanks, man. Oh, God. That's cool. Why is that not on your front doorbell? That needs to be next to your ring camera. Oh, Jesus. Hold on. Let me get the water. I don't want you to spill. I had to get some water after holding that damn thing. You know, uh, heavy acting, heavy, heavy item acting. Yeah. Uh, and um, I'm actually, uh, is something I've, I've, I'm pretty good at. I'm also pretty good at, it's easier if it's an actual bigger thing, but I'm pretty good at windy acting too. If you want, we'll swipe to it. What do you think is harder to play, drunk or windy? Oh, drunk. Okay. For me. What about being drunk in the wind? That's a book. Yeah, I guess that would be harder because it's drunk and then something else. Yeah, who is that sure. drunk in the wind? Is that tw- Mark Twain? I believe so. Scott F. Fitzgerald. I've read three books in my life. Two more than me. Whoa. I finished at one Goosebumps. I don't remember which one it was. Maybe, yeah, I don't remember. Um, but I don't finish books. I start books. I mm-hmm. buy books. They make great set design. Because I'm looking around right now. You put a couple books in here. I've read a sum of all of them. Yeah, a couple pages. Same. You read a chapter, you fall asleep. I mean, it's like, you know, it's like Virgin NyQuil. Go on. You read a couple pages and you're good. You're, you'll What's knock Virgin right. NyQuil? NyQuil, it doesn't fuck you up. Are you talking about ZQuil? The one that doesn't have the medic? It just has the, like, the same drug as Benadryl, which, by the way, is going to be a new sponsor of ours once we get our cats. But And we'll show, the, show the back of ZQuil and Benadryl. I don't remember what it was, but it's the same. 25 milligrams, 50 milligrams of the same drug. But then NyQuil has also the stuff that like the Sudafed and the stuff that helps you for coughing. And 
The, it's boring. It's science stuff. I yeah, think. science. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm just not trying to influence your audience to do lean. Not good. Core seeding, cough people, and cold. People lean. still do that. Oh yeah. Isn't oh that, yeah. Isn't that something that was kind of like from like Southern rap? It came out of Southern rap. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's it's still big in the Los Angeles culture. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I don't. I don't touch touch too many drugs. You know why? You're touching yourself. The Rick Glassman story tonight. Yeah. On Hallmark. So you said earlier that you've been wanting to do this podcast, and I'd like yeah. to ask, I'd like to say thank you for wanting to be part of this. Of um, course. Uh, when you want to do somebody's podcast, what t what takes so long for you to ask? Because you approached me about it at the improv, and I was like, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think it's not knowing that person, and I think we've crossed paths, but I don't know if we've ever really had a conversation. Conversation. So mm -hmm. I didn't. I would rather be friends with somebody first before I was like, "Hey, let me do your podcast." Like, because you have a lot of people that probably ask you to do your podcast all the time. And I think I don't think I'm, I don't like. I don't think personally in my head I'm like a great asset to their like. Oh, we got Trevor on this week. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> so for me, it's almost like an ego thing too. It's like you want to be the hot girl who's sought after. I want you to be like, you want to do my pod? I'm like, yeah, I guess I'm down. Now is that your impression of hot girls? Uh, the ones I've dated, yeah. Okay. They're all power lifters. Now, it's interesting. May I ask, um, do you ever meet somebody out and then just make love or sex to them that night? I have done that. Now, now it almost seems as if for boundaries, mm -hmm. you want to get to know somebody before doing their podcast, but you'll fuck them before you get to know them. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, one, one is four minutes. One is an hour, 57 minutes. Um, we've, been, we've gone longer than four minutes. Yeah, cut it. Scoot do. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I don't know. I think it's two different modes. You know, I don't. I think it's. Um, if is that it's, why this blanket is here? Uh, I have. Well, <laughs> interesting. Um, I think that if something is worth doing, you got to be present with that person and feel connected to them. I agree, and also, I don't like when I do those one night fucking flings whatever you never feel you're like that's ah, fine but i mean you're like oh, i just want somebody to hold me you've you know? never you've never had a, a, a sex with a girl that you didn't know that much but afterwards had her hold you yeah but it's not a good hold why is but, are you not heavy uh, enough yeah she, i'm the little spoon she's reaching in i like being a little spoon it's nice uh -huh. it's comforting Makes the little spoon gets a bad rap as far as like being like not masculine it's the most masculine. Seriously. Because I can still be over there just Googling Jack Link's beef jerky on my phone. Now that's masculine. Hands not tied up. I can be over there, yeah, playing Candy Crush with my grandpa. What do you think makes good sex? Say it to camera. Put a little music. You know, I lights. think good sex is the chemistry building up. I think oftentimes if there's not a lot of chemistry, I tend to uh, ejaculate quickly. Does that mean come? That does mean come. Gauges, gauges. Uh, I think, I think mainly it's, I think it's about leading into it. It's, there's both that like tension where you both really want to do it instead of just being like, that could be fun. We're drunk. Let's go do a thing. But, but it's like, it's a, it's a reward for hopefully both parties where you're like, we've been talking for a couple weeks. Ooh, we got drinks. Ooh. We're doing a thing. What's the thing? It's each holding hands in the back of an Uber pool. Ooh. The other people are like, whoa, are you doing, doing theaters? So you don't do pools. So I know you being something. No, I sent her. In, I sent her in an Uber pool, humble. But you said holding hands. So I take a helicopter. Now, virtually. now you're going the other way. Tell me for real, what's the thing? The, I, I think it's baby steps where you're like, what's the thing? You say you meet, you get drinks, and you're doing a thing. Like, what? Are you going out oh, on a you're date? Free, yeah, you're on a date. Where are you go? I like a good like rooftop bar. Sit out and have a drink. Yeah. Go. So, hey, hey, excuse me. Can we get? What do you want? You want another? Uh, yeah, I'll do an espresso martini, please. Another espresso martini, and I would like to get a uh, vodka sour. Yeah, vodka sour. Vodka sour. Yeah. Also, whatever the kitchen's having, I'll take four of them. Ooh, what does that mean? Is the I kitchen having things? It's up to them. So now we're at the rooftops, and we haven't had sex, but we've been texting for a couple weeks, and I go... Back and forth. You know, when I first saw you, I thought that, like, th this is going to sound mean, and I... Uh, I want to say I don't mean it mean, but I guess it kind of is. I was even sent pictures of you to my friends, and like, this guy looks like a fuck boy. And I'm like, I don't know. But, like, you're really sweet. That's when I put my arm around and say, I thought you were going to talk shit about my nose, but you didn't. So no, I, I think you, I, I like a character nose. Char it, what you, do you mean by character nose? You look, it's specific. You have a specific nose. Like, if I just saw a whole bunch of noses and nothing else, I would see that and be like, oh, that's Trevor. It's cute. Hey, I think you're cute. You're right. 
you're also really funny. Like, I didn't realize you'd be so funny. I thought of you like the, in this frat boy kind of guy. But like, you don't just do like dirty material. You also do some observations and <sighs> tell that to the comedy store. <laughs> Can I be honest? I, I don't want to sound like shitty, but like I do think there's a little quirkiness to you, and I like that. My pussy's throbbing. My pussy's throbbing. Ooh, thank you. Oh fuck! I was gonna say we ditch the drinks and get out of here. Uh, no. Can I get it to go, glass? <laughs> no, no, we're fine. Do you don't mind that I bring a metal straw? I just love turtles. I think that is so hot, and I would love to be the one who cleans that straw tonight. Okay, you know what? Maybe and you then know, we clean oh, each okay. other. Oh, no, no, never mind. Oh, that's that was a character. That was a character choice that I was doing. It's for this new. And then what? It's for oh, a new movie coming out Friday. Um, what's it called? Uh, Lucky, Lucky guess, guess this yes, Friday. Yes, Jason Statham, Trevor, Trevor Walls, Jason Sudeikis, you know, yeah. um, Adam Driver. Uh, so yeah, then, you, but, then but you that, take but, her home. But the, yeah, ideally. You lay her down. Do you have her wash her hands? No. Okay. So she doesn't touch your penis. She does, but I want that little bit of that espresso martini on her fingers. So, you know, because that'll help me get up. Caffeine, rock me down, baby. Yeah, I. Uh, Do you they, wash your hands before you pee? Before I pee? Yeah. No. Huh. You Comment in the, here if you wash your hands before you pee, after you pee, both or neither. I wash before I pee. Before uh, and after? Sometimes after. If what do I'm, you mean? If I'm out, like, if I'm at, like, a, some place where I'm going to shake people's hands or touch a microphone. Like, if I'm out, I guess, yes, I'll wash my hands after I pee out of respect for the other people. But I didn't pee on my hand. My dick's clean. You know how I know that? Because I always wash it before I pee. But, like, if I'm at home or if I'm at, like, somebody's house yeah. and I just pee, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. I know people are like, ew, gross. N I'll Almost run. nobody washes their hands no, after No, I'll pee. run the water real quick just to yeah, give you the lie. illusion. I yeah, won't do that. Exactly. I'll do one of these on my pants after. Yeah. Give the illusion. I'll put in more work to not wash my hands than to wash my hands. That's similar to where you don't know somebody and they say hi and they know you. You overcompensate by hugging them instead of shaking their hand. Yeah, or you ever do the half hug, half shake? We go one of these. Oh, yeah. I Big business move. Prince. Yeah. Well, you, you do first, and then you bring them in for the top top of the shoulder. Yeah. But do you ever just not hit them with the pat pat on the back? I you always just, pat pat. Pat pat's good. Pat pat is friendly. Pat pat is like good, cordial. Pat pat to me is like respectful. Pat pat is at the end, uh, like the se series finale of a show when you're leaving. I'll show you. I'm going to do it. You see your series finale of a show. You're about to get out, and um, you take one one more look at the series but you know from the audience eyes but from your eyes this now this now chapter of your life that's closing um mm -hmm. and then you pat the wall twice and leave let me show you what i mean all right you got it i need a wall yeah we can call this Trevor Wallace. Whoa, I like it. You go like this. Here you go. Oh, um, so with the last scene, we did our thing and blah, 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 blah. And uh, then now you're off to college and then you leave. Yeah. And that's the end. That's it. Uh, so now, you know, that was a heart moment. Yeah. That was a big moment where you left the college and we had our moment. We had our tear. We reminisced about stuff. You then leave. And now I'm just stuck. You're here. stuck alone with your emotions. Um, Live in the moment. That was, that was my last mug. Yeah, I thought that was going to happen. That kind of messes it up. Living room. Let me do it again. Let me do it again. Yeah. You keep it in. Yeah. Right. You know, but, you got, but you're protected. You got to let people know yeah. you're protected. Well, Security. All right. So, uh, blah, blah, blah. You have to count. All right. Love you, man. And then we... Yeah. Um, and then you start to cry. And then but, I do a joke. I, you cut the tension. Yeah, there we go. So there's the emotion. You cut the tension. You get the laugh. You can almost get out of the laugh where there's a callback where I wipe your eye and I say something like hey. theme music. Yeah. You know, something where it's like, ha, ha, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 okay. yeah, 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 um, yeah. And then and the person leaves and then you, um, that's it. That's the end. You're leaving. You go out. You open the door. Turn the light off, exit, fade to black, no music. No music. Show created by comes up. Boom. Credits in silence.
and then a Colgate commercial. Are you cleaning your teeth this weekend? You know, but, yeah. but you got to pay. You got to pay for the network somehow. That's good. I think it's a lot of hand pats, or it's a one solid fist bump on the wall, and and you, then you bring that fist bump in for a little bit. You bring it in. You're just like you're holding on to the moments. Yeah, I guess it depends if it's a multi cam or single. That's true. These are things you got to factor in. Yeah, but a good pat. That's uh that's the unplugging of, of, of a moment. One, two, you're done. Yeah. You know, you were talking about how like, you know, you talk for a little bit and you got to like um, get to know the person and like kind of get into it, not just get right to the sex. And, you know, I, listen, a lot of guys make fun of me. I'm probably going to get ragged on by all my boys by if I admit this now. Yeah. But I don't think foreplay is uh, starting with like fingering the girl or even kissing her. I think foreplay starts from... Um, I think store place starts before you even pick her up. Everything. Everything that builds into any mm. tension. A text, an exclamation, mm. an emoji, uh. a, a nice response time, a oh. woman who doesn't have read receipts on. I mean, these are all the things you got to look for because you're building it up. Build it up. Each is a building block to building this pyramid. Each is a building block to building this pyramid. Pyramid being my penis. Pyramid being penis and... Brick by brick. Brick in by brick. Dick Sick by in by dick. dick. Lick in by lick. Take the figure, put it on the stick. Hashtag clit. Big ass dick. Grab on the nipple, squeeze a little tip. Lick, lick. Sip, sip. Kiss, and, kiss. And that's all one hashtag, right? Well, you know. Yeah, it's trending. Mm. It's all that build up. It's, it's, it's something fun about <sighs> that. You ever that been with tension? A, you ever made a girl come? Tell me the truth. Uh, be honest, because I'm sure, like, have you made girls come? Or, yeah. Uh, yeah. Twice. Um, same girl, two times or two different girls? Uh, two different. Did they pee after? Yeah. <sighs> then it's real. I waited for it. And I, and I wasn't gonna, I didn't say anything. I wasn't like, oh yeah, bathroom's down the hall on the left. I was just kind of like, oh, for sure. How you don't have you a do? bathroom in your bedroom? You sell out, th you sell out theaters. You don't have a well, bathroom well, in your bedroom? Well, I do, but my bedroom has a hall in it. So. I say theme music. Thank you. <laughs> Jim Carrey. Yeah. So hallway, I go, you can go down the bath hall. On I know. I've been in here before. I know where your bathroom is. Oh, wow. Really? That's any interesting because we just hooked up for the first time. Yeah, Have but I been? walked in your bedroom, didn't I? Did you look at Zillow? I find that a lot of girls in LA will check out your home on Zillow before that fuck you. Interesting. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. What's he like? I see what he looks like. They don't pull up your Instagram. They pull up your Zillow. Oh, wow. wow. Four and a half bathrooms? Yeah. He seems hot. And it's modern, refurbished. Yeah. Ooh, he's probably great with tools. Yeah. Did he refurbish it himself? You know, in this day and age, I think it's important that if you're going to fuck a woman, um, to uh, give her a hallway to walk down before she has to pee. Something. Something to feel special. It's romantic. You know, it's it's her it's her movie scene where the the music's playing. She's like, what about love? I can't sing anymore from monetization. I'll sing it right? and you do it. I, I, I'm fine. Again, I pay, for, I'm walking, I pay for these things. I'm walking. What about love? And it's over now. It must have been a is it the one on the right or the left? There's two doors. You have two doors. Why? You know, keep I, people guessing. It's no, fine. why you have two doors to your bathroom? Like like a driveway that has a well, wrap around? Well, there's there's one you walk in that's like the sinks, and then there's one where there's like the toilet. Oh. What about love? Two doors. Two doors, two doors down. That's, that's a band. A, yeah, I was just going to say, it sounds like a, a 90s band. Two doors down. Wasn't that? So, it something was. doors down. Two doors, doors down. down. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's mainly just that. But um, Have you ever been with a man? I have not. Never? Mm-mm. You've never even sucked a guy's dick? Um, I don't. What do you define suck as? Like putting your lips around his wiener and oh, blowing him until ejaculation? No, I've gotten like Cheeto dust off a man's finger before. Like, you know? Santino? Uh, that's well, what I'd, he calls his cum is Cheeto dust I don't want to name drop but yeah yeah. Bobby Lee filmed it uh, how, how's your podcast presence what's your podcast like I know that we're, we're both similar on the subscriber mark how's uh, your podcast go it's good it's called Stiff Socks it's me and another man never sucked him off we might we might get it doesn't matter if you're gay or not by the way yeah 300th episode we might dabble but it's just me and Michael Blaustein another comedian uh and we just kind of had good energy riffing. And that's mainly what the show is, just two guys riffing it up. There's no structure. There's it, no. Did you almost name it two guys riffing it up? We thought about it, but uh, just too many words. Yeah. It's it's a hard plug. What about just riffing it up? 
I'm oh, because of Riffin or the Griffin. Riffin the Griffin, yeah. yeah. I, I'm thinking about like if I was driving by in a car mm-hmm. and I needed to plug my podcast to some people waiting for the light to turn green, what would sound good? Stiff socks. Oh, plugging your car. Two guys be- with podcast. Right, right, right. right. It's cool. You got to go quick. Stiff socks. So stiff socks is a play on coming into your socks. It is. Right? Which mm-hmm. is also a word play on coming into your own in a way. Because yes. mine is take your shoes off because my own is being in your socks and being comfortable mm-hmm. but also clean. Walk a mile in your own shoes. There's semen in it. Huh. But it's your own semen. It's a product, your own environment. You right. get what you put in. Did you ever think about how semen is really just stardust? Whoa. I mean, every molecule in our in our universe, in our body is, you know how it works, right? I mean, fusion what, the happens. body? Well, so a star, uh, uh, a star is-, is Me, uh, I'm a star. No, I mean like a ball of gas in the, in the cosmos. Also me. Interesting. <laughs> it's actually very confident. Tell me more. Uh, I have IBS. Right. Bailed on that joke. <laughs> so, so as the star, as, as the, as the core kind of cools down, yeah. the star expands Okay, because the center of gravity isn't as strong. So it's not keeping everything as tight. And as it's doing that, it, the, the, uh, there's more room for the, for the molecules to be bouncing around, more fusion is happening and it, things build up. So the lighter molecules, carbon, hydrogen, all these things happen first. That's why the world, the universe is filled mostly of that. And as it continues to fuse and make all these different elements, as it continues to go, it gets to the heli- heaviest element iron iron very you have heavy. metals of that yeah so it's what so did you know here's an interesting little uh little um piece of we call it a a, a, a tyso tidbit <laughs> do a song um we'll do it some animation and i happen to do a tyso tyso tidbit you paid for that one too that one i wrote so we oh do you can make residuals off your own song oh. when other people use them but uh usually okay. it's just friends they let them have them i'll use it um but make that and uh, so, uh, within a second, less than a second of when a star starts to the, starts to produce iron, within a second, that's when it explodes. Wow. So there's only a second of fusion where that happens because it's so heavy and so dense. That's what makes that. And then the star explodes, and all of those molecules, all of those elements, are thrown out to the ethers. You know, our universe was uh, was this. Our solar system was this way, where we had all these things, and and then you have a. Uh, it's just wrapping around, bumping into each other, and it's making stuff, and. You know how planets are formed. You know, if it's solids more than the, the four outer planets, your Uranus, your Saturn's, they're gaseous. And then this universe forms on this rock and water and it's this. And then evolution, I'm not going to get into that because it's very controversial. A lot of my audience doesn't believe in evolution. Yeah, I don't either. But what is, what, is, um, what is undeniable is that all of these elements came from these stars exploding. And you come in, we have these, these, these organic matter, you have these cells that make all this. Thing. But your ejaculate was all of the, all of the atoms in your ejaculate was formed and distributed from an exploding star. Wow. So all your cum, all my cum... This little black family, all my awards, it's all fucking stardust, man. Now that's a Milky Way theme music. It really is wild. <laughs> it really is wild. I mean, the amount of atoms that go into a nail clipping, it, uh, trillions. Adam Ray, Adam Divine, the, Adam the, Driver, Adam, Driver Adam, Corolla, Adam Corolla, Adam Corolla, Adam Honda. Adam, a guy I just went to high school with. I don't yeah. know how he was doing now, but he, had, he was early to have facial hair, so probably well. Does he know Garrett? No. Do you still talk to Garrett? No. What happened? I don't know. We stopped going to school. He was also the kid that told me if you <laughs> ate crust on your sandwiches, it would give you a lot of chest hair. And I thought that was weird, so I never ate crust. You don't look like you have chest hair. I have 14. I should have had more. Do you want more? Uh, enough. I, I want enough to where I can go, should I shave before this pool party? Right, but not so much where you're like, I'll be embarrassed to take my shirt off. Yeah. I have that kind of hair. I'm yeah. not embarrassed about it. You have aggressive amount? Yeah, I'm pretty hairy. Okay. I used to be really insecure about it until I saw Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Yeah. And I thought- Yeah, like, I wish I had more. No, no. No, no, I have a little bit more than he did. Oh, wow. Um, Would you ever like shave anything cool to it? Tic-tac I tried, I used travel? to. I used to in college, I used to uh, work out a lot and I was, uh, I, uh, I was pretty strong. And I would tighten my abs and I would trim, not shave, but trim around where the six pack is. Uh, so like when you're not tightening up, you can still see. But then after I showered, I just looked like I had a tic-tac-toe board. It just looked wow. like a pound sign. But Back you, then it was pound. Now it's a hashtag. Hey, come on. Everything's changing. These damn kids. But did you do that? And, and you did that to be like, I'm fucking this much more jacked? Or, or was it like a joke? It wasn't a joke. No, I did it sincerely. I wow. did it because like, well, I was trimming a little because I was insecure about it and I was trimming and yeah. and uh, I'm like, well, I was trimming. I'm like, I wonder, like almost like contouring, you know, like if you yeah. just trim it, but trim this one a little okay. bit more, it'll have like, but I don't know, maybe I contoured too much. 
I just did, shaved a tic-tac-toe board into my abs. Did any girls ever play tic-tac-toe? Well, it wasn't really tic-tac-toe because tic-tac-toe is nine and this was six. Okay. But like, you know, you get rid of one of the lines. Yeah, so what did it, okay. It just looked right. like boom, duh, duh. And it just looked like I shaved abs into my stomach. <laughs> I honestly, I think that's great. Yeah. I, I should do, I want to do it today, but with spray do you, tan. Do you have enough? Oh, spray tan. I don't have a ab. So uh, are you happy with you being a guy that's selling out theaters and doing a lot of comedy and making a living from this, but not getting into the thing where you don't want to even practice it that much acting? Are you content? I'm very content. I think what I do is awesome. Every every day, whatever I do is fueled into the umbrella of my brand. It's like everything, like when I used to work at my old job, I would do work. None of that went towards what I did. And then I, I would go home and then in the wee hours of the night, I would do work that would focus on me. Now everything I do is geared towards building my career. And it's 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 awesome. It's it's like everything I've ever wanted. Everything I do is pointed to helping grow this thing I have around me. I have like people that I like work with and I have mm -hmm. like, you know, this like small little team. And it's like, I don't say I had a big video. I said, we had a big video. It's like, I try to like make this, like this whole group under one effort to like really build this brand up. I feel that way with, with working with John Michael, shout out to John Michael who edits but with me. you find some people who get it. It's like, we're doing this together. They see the bigger picture and they see eye to eye and they understand your edits, they understand your style where you-, you And get, contribute like their own voice yes. to it too, which is really important to have people that not just are like your assistant, but like have people that take your direction, do your voice, do what you want, but also have their own skill set. Yeah. Like John Michael, he's just, uh, it used to be like, I want somebody who could do what I do because I would do it myself for a bit. Um, and then I've had different help. Shout out to Perry. We haven't forgotten Perry Grown. We love you. But, oh, I know him. Uh, do you know Perry? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he helped out for a while with the podcast. He was a big part of it. Mm -hmm. um, even though he's not doing it now, I still feel he's a big part of it. But like there are some people like they could do stuff so you don't have to. And then there's people that could come in and do those things, but also do things, some of it better than what you could do. Like right. let people shine in their skill set and collaborate. Um, it right. also takes a lot of pressure off personally for me, the need for control, because it's like, no, I just trust these, this person yeah. with these people now. Well, it's the the whole thing, two heads are better than one. And I think this- Or girls. What's up your deal with thinking girls aren't good, dude? <laughs> well, you told me right, <laughs> yeah, as, I yeah, no, I right as I walked in, you're like, hey, just a heads up. This is an alpha dominant podcast. Ble bleep all of what he said. No, you said that to me. Then keep it in. You were wearing a stringer tank top when I walked in. You said, men are dominant. Rick Glassman. Let's see. Oh, wow. This is a, this is a really cool place. Thanks, man. I like to keep my place uh, uh, beautiful and feminine because women are important. Have a seat on the couch if you don't mind. Can I get you anything to drink? Uh, you were saying something about muscle milk. If you're looking for just the right flooring, you need choices. And at Marshall Carpet One, you'll certainly find them. I don't know, I, I guess I'll have to look back. I don't really remember it, but I apologize if I, if I gave that off. But no, I think that women are so important and special and beautiful and men also are, but it's important that instead of looking at men and women as different, we're exactly the same. Men, women, and every race, there is no difference. We're all exactly the same. We're all exactly the same with no nuance and no difference. Men, anything a man could do, a woman could do, not worse, not better. They do it exactly the same. Whether you're black or you're white or Puerto Rican, it's all the same exact thing. Everybody has the same size penis. Everybody has the same size boobs. All girls come the same way clitorally or vaginally. I don't remember which one it is, but it's only one of them and they all do it the same way. And I just think it's important that there's like, as, an, as a voice to over 100,000 subscribers, the people here, see, people see me like, oh, here's a cool guy who fucks hot chicks who then comes back in his place and people in the ring camera are like, that guy is a huge hog. Yeah. I want you to also know, like, I also think that everybody is exactly the same with no nuance. And that's exactly what I said to you when I walked in to do your podcast. Cut to that clip. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I forgot. Yeah. What do you, what do you want to plug? I want to pl don't plug your own stuff. That's tacky. Like what should people see? I plug think your friends and things you're watching. 
I like that. I think you should definitely watch. I'm going to take that back. You didn't say anything. <laughs> you know, what I want to plug these days is the guy selling fruit in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Stop by. Get some. You get a little bit of watermelon, a little bit of lime, tahini on it. It's fucking amazing. It's fresh. It's good. It's really good. They're hustling too. It, it, well, a lot of them are on their phones, but you know, get their number. Text them. Fucking dude, these guys are lonely. Hit them up. Be like, dude, how's fruit? You thought going? about having one on their on your podcast? I did yesterday. What's his name or her name? Yeah, I don't see any of that stuff. Yeah, it's all the same. Um, uh, Ryan. Was she nice? Uh, capital R. Great. Yeah, really awesome. Yeah. Tell me about, tell me though, for real, um, you got some tour dates. I uh, do have some tour dates. Uh, oh, we'll put them up here if you remember to say no, but we'll put them up on the screen. We'll ask you. Boom. Part. Yeah. So the second half of this theater tour is kicking off next weekend, actually in Fort Lauderdale, baby. We're doing really all the U S states. We did a lot. This is all the cities. Fort Lauderdale, kinda, Arizona, uh, Fort Lauderdale, Tuscaloosa. Yeah. But these are a lot of the cities that I didn't get a chance to go to on the first leg of the tour. So this is anywhere from, you know, North Carolina, Indianapolis, Grand Rapids, uh, San Francisco. Grand Rapids is a great movie. Have you ever seen it? With Jason Satham? No, it's with uh, Ed Helms and John... Is John C. Riley? No, it's Ed Helms. I don't remember who else is in it. It's, but it really is like a, a, an amazing movie. Oh, I haven't seen it. Um, it, it he, he's their insurance salesman or something. And it's, it's like it takes place in this motel where there's going to be like this like uh, this convention. It's very like, it's very like seemingly low stakes from us, but this is their whole world. It's just I a, love that. Yeah, it's just a great, like has an indie vibe. I love a good low stakes, you know, whatever. When whether low stakes stuff or high stakes, classic. Love it. Like a little league game that like, this is the town. The Everything town, yeah. relies on that moment. Karate love Kid. Those. Karate Kid. Wax on, wax. I don't try not to say it anymore. Sorry. I know it was a different time and I don't think we should cancel them. But, yeah, sorry. But just, I like to just, just wax it on. There we go. Yeah. And that's a euphemism for life. Wax what, for it life? on. Euphemism. What'd you call me? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. It's okay. Euphemism. Can we bleep that one more time? I have a career I need to worry about. You know, it's interesting that you say that even as a joke, because instead of a career to focus on, which you said earlier, when it came down to it and your back was against the wall, your career was something for you to actually worry about. Could we talk on that? Also, you said you're not in your relationship anymore. You also admitted that you focus all of your attention under your career. Do you think that gets in the way? I do think so. We'll hear more at patreon.com slash take your shoes off for the extended ending of all the juicy gossip that Trevor has to say about why he thinks his relationship didn't work. That's not what I said. Yeah, you did. The, uh, yes, guys? You did. Yeah, you did. They, we saw it. I have a hallway in my bedroom. Yeah. Things are working. And, you know, why do you think it's so important that when you're in your house, you need to take such a long walk before you could get to the place that's supposed to make you rest? Why is it so hard to rest, because Trevor Wallace? Speak the, on it. Because the journey mm -hmm. is the reward. If you open a door and it's just a bed, you wouldn't be thankful for the bed. But when you walk down that hall, another five, six, seven steps, you go, fuck, I'm tired. And five, then, six, seven steps doesn't sound like a hall. You ever had Sounds wet shoes? Big hall. Wet because of pussy, vagina, having sex. No, it was raining and I had to park on the street. But I wa you walk in and then you, and, and you finally, you go up. So the hall is for gratitude. Yeah. It's a okay. reflection. It's a, it's a moment where you can go, time to turn all that outside world off. Reflection. I have two of those. It's a reflection. You walk in and you go, it's time. It's like the, the, the NBA games. I love games. There we go. NBA. They walk down a big hallway. Why? To build it up. Build up that tension. Guys, let's go. They're hitting the top of roofs and shit right. for good luck. Right. You know, if they just opened a door and it was the locker room to the court, there's no buildup. It's just right. one, two. You know, life is also, a hallway. Also, it's just a big stadium and the needs, I mean, that's the utility of having for safety. The space. Yeah, for safety. I was hoping you didn't call it out, but but you did. We went there. But there is a moment of truth in there. We got to build a it up. A moment of truth. You want to walk through. You want to high five people. Yeah. I hire extras that hang out of my wallways like Tuesdays just to watch up driver. Yeah, high five me when I'm walking down. And yeah, you know what you say, I'm, that makes sense. You turn that corner, boom, Thunderdome, my bad. But I'm so sorry that your relationship ended because. Okay. 
okay. I mean, I guess, but like, I wouldn't. I mean, yeah, but like, but like, but like that. Yeah, well, but and it's this. It's not. Yeah, and then, no. Okay. Here. And and do you think that oh, you would oh, you would oh. do it differently if you had the opportunity? Yeah, I think so. That's Trevor Wallace who would do it differently if he had the opportunity. Trevor, Trevor. Uh, yes, that is I. Trevor, um, Postmates driver, PMD. Uh, is there anything else you want to plug? Um, no, I I just want to plug that I'm doing tour dates and I post videos every week. And um, you're making cake off TikTok. Does TikTok pay you cake? TikTok does not pay yeah, you right? shit. Literally nothing or just very little? Very, very little. They yeah. barely pay you just to say that they pay you. It's like when your dad was like, go mow the yard. Here's $2 and I don't beat your ass. It's like they pay you. I'm sorry just that you say, grew up that way. It was sexual. But they pay you. What was that? Is that real? What? Did your dad molest you? No. Oh, I just don't want to make jokes of that because uh, I also want to normalize that that is the truth for a lot of people out there. That there's, you know one in a certain amount of number of people are molested from a certain thing. And uh, I- Yeah, no, I, I was looking for a cheap joke. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, the problem with that is that that is a cheap joke. And I know you don't like low hanging fruit. I don't mind low hanging fruit. Sometimes it's easier to reach, but just as a lot of people out here that might be getting, you know, honestly fucked by their parents while they're watching this or something or some version of that. And although it's important to talk about, uh, I don't want to pretend or make light. Um, so- Trevor, it sucks that you that you make jokes about that kind of stuff and how much you hate women. But thank I was you just doing so my best Rick Glassman impression. Bleep everything you just said. I, I saw you last night at the improv. I mean, you were going in on it. You took your belt off at one point, and you were well, like, it's daddy now. You even said it earlier. Yeah, were you, what, I was like, talking women, to my son. The elevator. Oh, oh, you. Do oh, you have okay. kids? Uh, No. Uh, do you, are you okay with me making that joke about you saying those things? Because it's obviously a joke, but I also don't want to make you uncomfortable. Based on the way we're editing it, we're going to make it look like that's all real. So I just want to make sure you're okay with that. Yeah, I mean, it's like, yeah, yeah. No, no, I say this. I say this to wink to the audience. So the audience knows that you also think that women are the same exact as men. And yeah. there's no difference between any of us. I have a shirt on that says that. so much for having me Blubbity blue and i'm sorry to hear about the things with you and scoop yeah, oh, oh yeah thanks this sounds really sincere quietly because now we're not like like when they're doing the news and then they're talking and like fixing oh, their papers right, 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 that's right. this part of it and we're out of focus yeah, a little so bit like, like do a great job today thanks so you ever see like in late night television when like they're going to commercial and the host goes with the guys like you don't know yeah. what they're saying. It's like that part. Yeah. Big hand movements. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Windy acting. Yeah.